Welcome back to West Lafayette, Indiana. Ross Age Stadium, the site today. Purdue and Bowling Green. Third straight home game for Purdue here in West Lafayette. They lost last week to Virginia Tech here. And now that's the new starting quarterback. David Blau will get his first start. He is a redshirt freshman out of Texas. The head coach of the Boilermakers is Daryl Hazel. This is his third year, just five wins here with the Purdue Boilermakers. It's his fifth year overall. He was a Mid-American Conference coach at Kent State for two years. His last year, he was 11-3, and three, so he knows something about the Mid-American Conference. Time now for our Auto Owners Insurance Impact players. Kristen Arian, Stanley Jackson here. When Purdue has the ball, these are the impact players. Well, we talked about that in pregame. The one thing Purdue wants to do is run the ball today. So you see DJ Knox, Markel Jones, they both have over 200 yards this season and they both can catch the ball out of the backfield. So you'll see those guys being very active because if you can run the ball, you'll protect the quarterback. And then on a the defensive end, you got Taylor Royster for Bowling Green. On offensive Bowling Green, we talked about that high-powered offense, Matt Johnson. He's only got one interception this year to 12 touchdowns, and his number one guy is Roger Lewis. He's going to try to feed him the rock today, but he has to be on the lookout for Antoine Miles. This guy has gotten after. He's got four sacks this year, 19 tackles, one of those sacks last week was for a big fumble recovery that led to a touchdown. Dino Babers got his first head coaching job at Eastern Illinois when he was 50 years old. Great success there. 7-5 and 12-2 and and records now in his second season as the Bowling Green head coach. They went to the MAC championship a year ago, lost, and then won a bowl game against South Alabama. Bowling Green won the toss. They elected to receive. That means that Paul Griggs will kick it off for the Boilermakers. And back deep, Clint Stevens. And Bowling Green has it at the 10, the 15, the 20. And it's brought out by Dernard Turner. And if you're looking for your school's game, go to btn.com slash gamefinder right now to find the game in your area. Gain of 18 yards, Bowling Green will have the ball first and 10. They average 88 plays per game. They had 105 plays for 692 yards in Maryland a couple of weeks ago. And Matt Johnson leads all FBS passers with almost 1,400 yards. Stanley, 12 touchdowns, and you hit on it, just one interception through the first three games. Yeah, he's putting together a special campaign. And Johnson has the ball tipped, and it is nearly intercepted. It was tipped by Jawan Bentley and nearly picked off by Andy James Garcia. You will take a look right here. One of the things the coaches talked about is defensive linemen getting their hands up and being active, and boom, right there. Active hands almost leads to an early turnover for that Purdue defense. And again, he's had just one interception. He has thrown the most passes of any quarterback in FBS, averaging nearly 50 pass attempts per game on second down Johnson is forced out of the pocket and sacked so the Purdue defense on their first two plays has made life miserable for Matt Johnson and that's what you call sometimes that secondary sack I mean nowhere to go with the football outstanding job by that Purdue secondary and if you can get pressure with just your front four guys then you can make it a long day for that offense Evan Panfield had the sack that's Purdue's 33rd tackle for loss this year they came in third in FBS. And now third and 16 for Bowling Green at their own 16-yard line. Johnson with five wide receivers. Dances out of the pocket, and it is complete. And that's Roger Lewis for the first down out to the 34-yard line. Lewis in the last two weeks, 22 catches for 461 yards. And that was just a laser beam. That's what you call a scramble drill. There's nowhere to go with the ball early. Just move a little bit in the pocket, find an open receiver, and fire one in. A 19-yard pass and catch for Bowling Green. They average nearly 28 first downs per game. That's ninth in the nation. Three wide receivers to the top of the screen. First and 10 at their own 35. And Johnson has time. He goes up top. Looks for Gary Dieter, and it's incomplete. That's just great coverage right there by Frankie Williams. It's just a go route. You want to be in position so that receiver can't catch the ball. Good coverage by the corner there. And a penalty flag on the field. Offside. Side. Defense. 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 Number 95. Five-yard five penalty. First down. First down. Dan Caprin is our referee today, and there's the jump. 
that's a veteran move right there. You got a senior quarterback. Anytime you get the defense to jump off sides, you get opportunity to take a shot deep, and that's just what he did. Purdue will be in the nickel and sometimes the dime, but their dime has seven defensive backs today. Pass is complete. Dieter has it into Purdue territory. He has the first down and a penalty flag on the field. Uh, it's exactly what we talked about, about Purdue. Tackling in space It's something that they're going to have to do. Uh, Bowling Green throws the ball all over the field. They've got a bunch of receivers they like. you got to be able to tackle after they run that bubble screen. Personal foul, clipping, offense, number 68, 15-yard penalty, first down. And that penalty is on 6'4 redshirt sophomore Ryan Hunter, the left guard out of North Bay, Ontario, Canada. See his motion here. He's going to get too low. When you're blocking downfield, you got to stay up high now. You can't get to the legs anymore. That's a real good change in college football. First down and 16 at the spot of the foul. Five wide receivers again. Johnson out of the pocket. He's forced out of the pocket. Jalen Robinson chases him, and Johnson will get out of bounds to the 37. A nice pickup by the redshirt senior out of Harrisburg, Pennsylvania, a gain of eight. That's a great job by him. Sometimes the best thing you can do is not force a ball. But, but I have to tell you, I'm impressed with what Purdue is doing up front right now. Only rushing three and getting pressure on the quarterback. That's going to allow them to play a lot more guys in the secondary and make it tougher to find passing lanes. Again, five wide receivers. Quick pass. Johnson over the middle. Wrapped up Jawan Bentley on the tackle. And that catch made by Ryan Burbrink. Matt Johnson last year injured in the first game, suffered a hip injury. His backup, James Kanapke, came in out of Fort Wayne and, in fact, was the MVP of the bowl win last year against South Alabama. But Johnson won the battle back in the spring. And Johnson has been terrific here. Early he has faced and flushed out of the pocket. Bentley missed the sack, and he's out into Purdue territory to the 49, and that's another first down. Yeah, I guarantee you Juwan Bentley would love to have that one back. It's just great coverage in the secondary by Purdue. You get an opportunity to shoot a late linebacker right through a lap lane right there. You got to make that play. You got to get that offense off the field. And quick pass out to Ronnie Moore. And Moore is out of bounds. One of the issues last week, Stanley, is Purdue missed 20 tackles last week against Virginia Tech, especially in that third quarter when the game changed. And that's already showing up here today with two really big missed tackles that have both led to first down. Second down short now. Once Bowling Green goes to the bench to make changes, so will Purdue. And now the pitch, and it goes to Travis Green, the first time that Bowling Green has run the ball. And Green has the first down. He's a redshirt senior out of Carroll City, Florida. He's rushed for almost 3,000 yards in his career. And look how quickly they get the football and Green to the 31-yard line. We talked with Dino Babers on Thursday morning. I asked him, how quickly in the play clock do you want to snap the ball? And he said, once it's spotted, we're going. Yeah, I think he wanted to do it even faster than that. Johnson slings it out to the wide side and that catch again by Ronnie Moore and enough for a Bowling Green first down. Hey, look the key defensively is to get set up hey, the last two plays Purdue's got caught walking around you've got to get set up because like you just said they're going to snap the ball as soon as the official blows the whistle. And now Johnson play action has some time out of the pocket he's chased and he'll throw it out of bounds good pressure from Ryan Watson the nose guard for Purdue wearing number 92 and now second down for Bowling Green. And, and listen, when when both Purdue gets set up defensively, they cover better and they pressure the quarterback more. So that, that's a key for them going forward. They've got to get ready. Don't get caught off guard. Here. Stanley already the 11th play of this drive and they pitch it up the middle. And it's Derek Lee, a tight end, a senior out of Wichita, Kansas. That's a pass. And Lee, who has five receptions coming in, has his sixth of the year. And just a little classic shuffle pass. You see the tight end come down the lane, picks up a big first down. And Green now fights his way inside the five and into the end zone. Travis Green, his second touchdown of the year and his 28th of his Bowling Green career.
And that was too easy right there. You, you get into the red area, you got to put a better resistance on defense. And, and I got to tell you, I think Purdue is going to be okay with that defensive set because there was a couple of opportunities where they could have gotten Bowling Green off the field. And so if they just tackle better going forward, they'll be just fine. Tyler Tate is on for the point after. He's 14 of 15 on the year. And a chance to give Bowling Green a 7-0 lead. We're not even four minutes into the first quarter. Tate's kick is up and good. The hold from James Kanapke. And the Bowling Green Falcons take it down the field on the opening drive of this afternoon. Travis Green, his second rushing touchdown of the year. And the Falcons lead early 7-0. BTN is presented by the United States Marine Corps. The few, the proud, the Marines. And brought to you by FanDuel, the leader in one-week fantasy football. Gorgeous Saturday afternoon in West Central Indiana. Temperatures in the low 70s. Bowling Green takes it down the field on the first, first possession, 7 nothing. And the Falcons, yes, they are soaring in the FBS ranks. Look where they rank. First, first, third, third, tied for ninth and first downs. They are the most prolific passing team in the NCAA FBS through the first three weeks. And they ran it in there. Matt Johnson was very efficient. Five of six through the air on that drive, Stanley, for 44 yards for Dino Babers' team. Yeah, this offense is the real deal. You know, they had a couple of bad plays. You had a sack there. You had a penalty. And yet, they still were able to get a touchdown in that first possession. And it's a line drive kick by Tate that DJ Knox watches go out of the end zone. And first and ten now for the Purdue Boilermakers. And the starting debut of redshirt freshman David Blau out of Carrollton, Texas. His first career start, he was three of seven last week for 11 yards, three of eight in his short career, 11 yards. What's going through his mind? You can only experience it on the field. This is his first snap as a starter. The first thing, he doesn't want to compete with Bowling Green's quarterback. He wants to play his game, don't force anything, and don't turn the football over. Three wide receivers. And the first play is a run. Two good running backs that will alternate today for Purdue. That's D.J. Knox, a sophomore out of Fairburn, Georgia. That's a gain of five. We'll also see Indiana Mr. Football, Markel Jones. And Purdue, like Bowling Green, will not huddle. They're wearing the fluorescent green. It's hammer down cancer. And we've got penalty flags on the field as that pass is complete. Would be enough for a first down, but penalty flags in the secondary. Yeah, just too many guys on the field on defense. Purdue went to the hurry up. Bowling Green try to get a guy in there. It's tough to do when a team is running hurry up. 12 guys on the field. Illegal substitution. Too many men on the field by the defense. Five yard penalty. Second down. So, Stanley, it's interesting that Purdue takes advantage of the fast pace. He is right there. He's trying to run off the field. He's got a long way to go. And now the officials are going to come over and talk it over. Again, Daniel Capron is our referee. Correction. First down. It is a first down. Pat Bears are umpire. Jim Ryan is the head linesman. Center judge is Kurt Johnson. He'll be over the football all afternoon long. Brian Bollinger, the line judge. Craig Jeffries, the side judge. Kyle DeBuse is the field judge, and Jake Kemp is the back judge. Handoff, Knox. And he has running room out to the 43-yard line. They've got two good young running backs, Stanley, that have never played until this year. No, and, and that's how you take pressure off a first-time starting quarterback is by running the ball effectively, staying on schedule with down and distance, and their left side of the offensive line did an outstanding job of creating a rush lane. Defense, Defense. Defense. lined up in the neutral zone. Number 92, five-yard penalty, first down. Now, Stanley, this is something we talked to Dino Babers about, a, a problem that 
Bowling Green has had with penalties. They've had double figure penalties in each of their first three games, and they're averaging over 100 yards. And Dino Babers told us it has to stop. No, Coach Babers has that military background. He believes in discipline, and that's not something he's happy about. And that's where they have to improve. So, two early penalties as Blau has it on first down and short, and his pass is nearly picked off. But it was a hard rush by outside linebacker Trent Green that put the pressure on the Purdue quarterback. Yeah, Purdue was just trying to throw a simple screen route. They got caught in that Bowling Green blitz. Quarterback had to get rid of it sooner than he wanted to. He got lucky right there. That one was almost picked off. That's something that offensive coordinator John Shoup and Daryl Hazel told us yesterday. They've got to find a way to get the ball to their running backs, whether they run it or in the pass. And Nowhere to go for DJ Knox. It'll be third down for the Boilers. A much better job right there for that Bowling Green defensive front. It just didn't allow a lane. It didn't allow any push from that offensive line. So here they are, third down along. You see the replay. Look at the left side of that defensive line. Just no push, nowhere to go. And it's been hammer down cancer week here in West Lafayette on the Purdue campus. That's why you see the fluorescent green in the uniforms for Purdue today. Honoring those that have battled the disease and survivors, and the pass is complete. And no, now the official says it hit the ground, and that was intended for Danny Anthro. Yeah, Dan is an outstanding wide receiver here for Purdue. Had a knee injury late last season. He's trying to recover. You wish you had that one back because he had enough distance for the first down. Yeah, that bad ball is just on the ground. It was thrown a little behind him. It's a great opportunity right there for David to pick up that first down. They cup Bowling Green and man to man, but that ball is thrown too far behind, and Anthrop can't make the catch. So a punting situation now for Purdue. They have turned the duties over to a freshman out of Indianapolis, Joe Shopper. He started his first game last week, averaged 49 yards per kick against Virginia Tech, including a long of 69 that pinned the Hokies inside the five. The young man can kick, and right now that's exactly what you need. You want to be able to pin this Purdue or this Bowling Green offense as far back as possible. Ryan Burbrink is back for the Falcons, and they will use the delay of game. Offense, five yards penalty, still fourth down. Must be pretty confident that he can boom one here where you're going to take five yards back. That's exactly what that tells you. They want more space so he doesn't put this one through the end zone. So uh, I'm expecting him to get off a great kick here. Fourth down, ball at the 37. Burbrink is a redshirt senior out of Sunnyside, Maryland, and that's a line drive punt that Burbrink will allow to bounce, and it will go inside the 20. So Shopper does his job. Bowling Green will start first down and 10. A 45-yard punt. Ball spotted at the 19. 7-0 Falcons. Later today, college football is on Fox Sports 1 as Maryland heads to West Virginia for a battle with the Mountaineers. Coverage begins at 3 p.m. Eastern on Fox Sports 1. Ross Aid Stadium, West Lafayette, Indiana, third straight home game for Purdue, trying to bounce back after a 51-24 loss to Virginia Tech last week. They opened the season on the road at Marshall, losing 41-31, then beat Indiana State. Dino Babers and Bowling Green, they have played a rough schedule in the non-conference. And on first down, Johnson over the middle, and it is complete. Wide open with plenty of running room. And just, that's Chris Gallon. That, that was just great action on there, Chris. I mean, there's a zone read. He held that ball for a long time. The secondary got caught looking in the backfield, and he's wide open for a big pickup. And now Green is wrapped up. Forward progress. Uh, he won't get any. It'll be second and ten. They'll mark the ball at the 46. No gain. Jalen Robinson was suspended for the first two games. Played last week. He had five tackles, two and a half for loss. He's the son of one of the all-time great Boilermaker basketball players, Glenn Robinson. Big dog. Johnson finds his running back Green avoids a couple of tackles. And gets into Boulder territory at the 45. He's short of a first down, gain of nine. And, and those are the plays that will drive a defensive coordinator crazy. You have an opportunity, you know, you want them to catch the ball in front of you, you have to make the initial tackle. You can't allow for all these yards after the catch. 
that's been a problem for Purdue so far this season and showing up here today. On the first drive, Johnson officially with seven of nine, snap goes over his head, and he does not fall on the ball, and it looks like Purdue has it. Johnson made the mistake and had the ball squirt away. The Purdue defense has forced a turnover in 20 consecutive games, and they may have one here. And Johnson is walking off the field with his head down, snapped over his head, and it look, looks like Andy James Garcia. Yeah, he just, he never had a chance, unless he was 6'10". That ball was snapped high over his head. The only thing he probably could have did better was try to jump on that ball and secure it, but great opportunity for the Boilermakers right here. I mean, it needed something to happen. I didn't want to say early in the first quarter that they needed to stop on defense, but it felt like they needed to stop, and maybe this is just what the doctor ordered to get this offense going. Officially, we said it was 42, but I believe it was 47, Shane Henley that was also in there. Henley and Garcia, now first down and 10. Wow, he has the ability to run the football and he'll slide. And looks like he may have to work on that slide, Stanley. <laughs> yeah, the hook slide didn't work for him that time. Got caught up in the turf a little bit. But look, that was a great decision by him. Again, cover two is what he was facing there. Nowhere to go with the football. You see a slight rushing lane, run the ball, get some positive yards. And sometimes for quarterbacks, that first hit is what you need to wake you up. Anthrop in motion. Wow, again comes out of the pocket and he'll shovel the pass to his tight end. And that's enough for a first down to the 29-yard line. The catch made by fifth-year Jordan Jurasevich, his first start last week. Hey, just a good heads he played. If pocket collapses, you step up, you see a receiver, just flip the ball to him. Nice, soft, catchable ball to pick up the first down. That's only his second career reception, and now the freshman gets the ball. Markel Jones, Mr. Indiana football out of Columbus, Indiana, East High School. All he did as a senior a year ago, Stanley, 3,565 yards and 60, count them, 60 touchdowns. That's just that's absurd numbers. And now he catches it out of the backfield to the 20, knocked out of bounds to the 19. And looks like they may spot it a little bit short of a first down, gain well, of five. And Coach Hayes will talk to us about that a little bit, Chris, getting the backs involved, not just running the ball, but allowing them to get to the edge and catch the ball. They both have great hands and they're great in space. So that's a good way to get those young backs involved and get them one-on-one -on -one with linebackers to create big plays. Yeah, Darrell Hazel talked uh, about the screen game, that that can be very effective against this Bowling Green defense. And Blau a little more active, a little bit more able to run with the football. Handoff. And that's the first down. And that's Jones with the carry, gain of a couple. And first down and goal inside the red zone now for Purdue, where they are 9 of 10 all the year with six touchdowns. And it's important here to get a touchdown. When you're playing a high-powered offense, three doesn't get it done. You need six on the board. Greg Hudson, the defensive coordinator for the Boilermakers, agreed, and he said the best defense against the Falcons today is good offense. Keep that offense on the field moving the football. Yeah, you want to keep uh, Mr. Johnson over there. You want him to get a little stiff. You want him to have the opportunity to run a bunch of plays on you. And look, you know, the old basketball ad adage that I used to hear is teams that press don't like to be pressed. Well, that's what Purdue is doing here a little bit, running that same up-tempo offense, and it's affecting that Bowling Green defense. Four wide receivers now. Man in motion is Jones to Blau run the football inside the 10. Redshirt freshman out of Carrollton, Texas. In high school, he threw for almost 6,000 yards and 57 touchdowns. Boilermakers had a pretty good quarterback years ago out of the state of Texas. His name was Drew Brees. <laughs> you talk about big shoes to fill, but when you saw that young man walking into the stadium this morning, that's what you said. He's got confidence. He's got moxie. He's a savvy quarterback, and he looks good right now in this drive. A little action from the backfield quarterback draw. That's one thing he does a little better than Austin Appleby. This would be a great opportunity for them to punch it in and get six. Crowd didn't like it, but the official allowed 
Bowling Green to substitute because Purdue did. That pass now to Danny Anthrop. Again, that center judge will stand over the football and release the ball. If Purdue changes players, Bowling Green has the option to change players. Yeah, that's a good rule change this season. I mean, when these teams are running plays as fast as they are, you want to be able to get fresh defensive players in, and it, it's only fair to allow them to do that because they're always delayed in their substitution based on what the offense does. Isaiah Lunsford was very slow getting out there as Blau drops back, looks, tosses it, it's complete. There was a lot of traffic there, catch made, and enough for a first down. Boilermakers get a gain of four, and they'll have first down and goal. That's a gutsy call here on fourth down, little play action pass, nice little touch pass right there to your top wide receiver to pick up that first down and have you a goal to go. Well, you said you've got to score. You've got to match Bowling Green. Three isn't going to do it. No, three doesn't help you here. And this runs the clock. It keeps that high-powered offense on the sideline like we mentioned a minute ago. Markel Jones in the backfield now with Blau. Blau out of the pocket, and he threw it away. And the official, I believe, is going to say he's down. He, has, he keeps the clock winding, so Blau Hit the ground at the 16, second down and goal. Yeah, you've showed up a little bit right there. Sometimes you just got to tuck that ball away and uh, and take the sack because you're already in the red area. You don't want to turn it over. You never want to throw the ball back into the middle late. He got away with one right there. Don't want to hurt the team here. That's why he's playing because turnovers have plagued this offense. That's a loss of nine. Trent Green on the sack. And now Black. Forced out of the pocket up the middle, and he's taken down, and he fumbles the football. That's been a problem for Boilermaker quarterbacks. Austin Appleby lost his job because of six interceptions and a fumble last week that led to points. Blau was able to hang on to the football. And again, just pressure from the edges. He's forced through the middle. Whenever you're running with the football, you got to put it away. Like I tell my sons, you can't run with it like it's a loaf of bread. Put the ball away and protect it. And he was uh, helped out by... Fifth-year senior Robert Kugler making his 35th straight start at center. He hopped on the ball for the Boulder Now Blau looks over the middle. It's complete. Dominique Young fights his way. Down to the run. Is it a touchdown? Where will they spot the ball? They spot him short at the one-yard line. Just a good, accurate throw from David right there. Just a traditional slant route. You catch it, lead the receiver, and then allow him to run afterwards. A big body, great fight by the wide receiver. And it's fourth and goal now at the one-yard line. Purdue trying to match Bowling Green. Blau tries to go for the snap, and he backs his way to the goal line. The officials, and it's a touchdown. David Blau in his first career start with a second effort. Gets his touchdown. The Boulder have cut it to one. There was no question about it, Chris. It was the second effort that got it done. That Bowling Green defensive front had great initial pop and push, but David was able to keep his legs turning, spin a little bit, and get it into the end zone. You see right there, they're all over him, but he's working the legs, fought the ball into the end zone. That was a big play for this Purdue offense. They really needed that touchdown. Dernard Turner was trying to make that play, and he could not bring down David Blau. And now Paul Griggs on, Thomas Meadows the hold as the Boulder look to tie it here in the opening quarter. Griggs perfect on the year, 13 of 13. Point after touchdowns and the red shirt freshman has tied it for Purdue. 7-7 on BTN. Purdue takes advantage of the Bowling Green fumble and ties it at seven with 205 to play here in the first quarter with former Ohio State quarterback Stanley Jackson. I'm Kristen Eric. For the third consecutive year, Daryl Hazel has made a quarterback change at some point in the season. Austin Appleby replaced by David Blau. A year ago was Appleby in place of Danny Etling. And before that, it was Etling for Rob Henry. The carousel continues for Purdue. No quarterback has started consecutive season openers since Curtis Painter did it from 06 to 08. They are very high, Stanley, on this young man. Daryl Hazel gushed, gushed about him yesterday. Yeah, I, I think they like what he brings to the table. He's a, a very confident guy, and he can 
run with the ball. And look, if you're going to have a good program, you have to have stability at quarterback. And that's one of the things over the last 20 years has been great for this program. All right, let's send it to Chicago, a T-Mobile studio update with Mike Hall. All right, thank you very much, Mike. We'll have to maybe hear about Mike singing the seventh inning stretch at Wrigley Field on Wednesday. Stanley, you're up in Chicago. You work with Mike. Do you think he's capable of that? Not even close. <laughs> have mercy. Not even close. <laughs> Bowling Green has the football. First and ten at their own 25. They average 88 plays per game. Johnson. Had the snap go over his head on the last play. Nearly picked off and broken up. A nice play by Leroy Clark. And some gutsy throw by Johnson right there. Whenever you're throwing the ball late, there are two areas you want to stay away from. One is back to the middle of the field, and two is the far throw all the way to the edge because corners that can run have an opportunity to get there. So he was lucky on that one. That was had a pick six there. You got to be careful throwing that ball late outside. Johnson again, catch made. And that's Roger Lewis comes in with 24 receptions, five touchdowns, 22 in each of the in, the in the last two weeks in the win against Maryland and Memphis. And Johnson to Lewis, five times they've combined to go 45 yards or more, four times 58 yards or more for a touchdown. So they'll go up top. That's high powered offense. And uh, that's why you want to be tighter and close the gap on him quick. Penalty flag. And that pass is complete to Garrick Dieter. It looked like defense was off sides there. And I, I got to tell you, I, I am impressed with Matt Johnson. He's a smart quarterback. He's got a big arm. He can make every throw. He's accurate. This offense is something special. Offside. Defense number 11. That penalty is declined. The play results in a first down. So right there, just to the bottom of your screen, just getting a little antsy there. Antoine Myers, you got to hold your water, son. Wait for the opportunity to get off on a snap. 29 yard pass play to Dieter, who's a redshirt junior out of South Bend, Indiana. He was excited to come back to this state and play. Bowling Green has won the two previous meetings with Purdue. Going back to 2003, the last time the Falcons beat the Boilermakers. In fact, that was a year they had two Big Ten wins. They're trying to do it again. In 2003, they beat Purdue and Northwestern, and of course, already this year, they've won on the road in Maryland. They've got a good football team. Had a couple of tough losses early in the year, but there's no question, they've got a good team. Johnson, it's complete. Lewis has the catch again. Anthony Brown makes the tackle for the Boilermakers and a first down for Bowling Green. Yeah, Purdue is really concerned about Bowling Green going over the top. So you see right here, real soft coverage. You know, you don't even have a DB in the pitcher until he catches the ball and takes five steps. And that's what Purdue is trying to do, keep them in front. 12-yard pass play, and a new running back is in, Fred Coppett, a junior out of Fort Lauderdale, Florida. He has 32 carries coming in for 202 yards. When he handles the ball, averages six yards per rush. Second down. Johnson keeps it and he slides just short of the first down to the 16 yard line. Just a little zone read action is something that he can do pretty good as well. He's a kid that can run well with the ball, but the best thing about him is he makes great decisions. Gain of five. No substitution by Bowling Green on the offensive end, so Purdue has to keep its 11 out there. Johnson goes to the corner of the end zone looking for Dieter. Dieter has the ball slapped away. Yeah, just great coverage right there by Dieter. Played the ball extremely well. I think Johnson thought defense was offside, so he took a shot downfield on that third and one. But just good, better defensive effort right there by Purdue. Frankie Williams made the play, the veteran cornerback for Purdue. Falcons use a timeout as we'll head to the second quarter, tied at seven. Bowling Green and Purdue tied at seven. 
Start the second quarter here. Dino Babers, the head coach of the Bowling Green Falcons, and it's now fourth down and one because of this play. It's a big play. When you play a high-powered offense that throws the ball, you have to play the ball well. See, great position by the defensive back. He plays the ball and knocks it down. Frankie Williams, just another opportunity to get this Bowling Green offense off the field when you can knock plays down. And they'll go for it, fourth and one at the Purdue 15. They scored in the red zone last time out. Johnson keeps it, has the first down. Just the sprint option right there. You're running an option off the left side of the offense. The quarterback's going to read the end man of the line of scrimmage. If he gets too far upfield, he keeps it. Dives down for one yard to pick up a first down. Coppin is in the backfield. He gets the hand off the 10. Inside the 10 to the 8-yard line. Coppin, the junior out of Fort Lauderdale, Florida, will alternate with Travis Green in the backcourt, in the backfield. That's a gain of four. Three wide receivers. We've seen as many as five wide receivers today. And now Johnson is hit as he throws the ball, but it's complete to Burbrink. And Burbrink should have the first down. It'll be first and goal at the two for Bowling Green. That, that was a great job by Frankie Williams. He's out there by himself on the island. There's two receivers, one to block him. He's got to get through the block and make the play. It's just a quick bubble screen at the line of scrimmage. It's an excellent job there by Frankie not allowing the touchdown there. And, and look, it kind of seems like a backcourt in basketball yeah, it does. up-tempo pace. Again, he's got uh, Dino Babers has a connection to Mike Martz, the greatest show on turf with the St. Louis Rams, and that's a touchdown for Bowling Green as they run it in. And it's Donovan Wilson, the redshirt sophomore out of Dublin, Ohio. And Bowling Green has its second touchdown. And, and look, they're impressive inside the five-yard line. I mean, for a team that throws it all over the place, a finesse football team, they get pretty physical in between the tackles, between the 10 and goal line. That's the second time they've been able to power the ball in on this Purdue defensive front. And Tyler Tate on. Kanapke the hole. And nearly blocked by Anthony Brown, but 12 plays, 75 yards. Three minutes and seven seconds. Wilson caps it with a short run for the Falcons. Bowling Green leads 14-7. Next Saturday, conference play is in full swing at noon. Minnesota takes on 17th-ranked Northwestern, followed by Illinois hosting Nebraska at 3.30. Then in prime time, Michigan heads to Maryland for a battle under the lights. Pre-game coverage starts next Saturday at 10.30 Eastern on BTN and BTN to go. The studio crew, Dave, Jerry, Howard, they'll be live in Maryland for that opening matchup as Jim Harbaugh brings the Wolverines to Maryland. And the kick drives DJ Knox into the end zone. Let's head back to Chicago. Mike Hall in a T-Mobile studio update. All right, thanks, Mike. We're here in West Lafayette, Ross 8 Stadium. Final non-conference game for Purdue. They've made a quarterback change again coming in. David Blau is the redshirt freshman out of Carrollton, Texas. And they took advantage of a Bowling Green turnover to score on their second possession. Blau with a one-yard run. Now first down and 10 at the Boilermaker 25. And Knox is wrestled down in the backfield. Yeah, tough sledding there. You see once Purdue made the shift and loaded the box, Bowling Green did the same thing and brought nine guys into the box. It's tough to run the ball sometimes there. And when you have a young quarterback, he's not really comfortable with checking out when you've got nine guys in the box. We'll have to take a look at that as the game goes on to see if David will begin to check when the box is loaded. Zach Colvin made that stop. Senior out of Shorewood, Illinois. Wow. Looks over the middle, and it's nearly caught, but a penalty flag. Young at the 45-yard line, three Bowling Green defenders there, and Young is still down. Yeah, it's either going to be, you know, hitting a defenseless receiver or leading with the head. We'll take a look at that here. That was a great opportunity for David right there. You get man coverage, man free with a safety back deep. He got a chance to throw the post right there. We'll take a look at the penalty. 
Oh, yeah, and you hit him, hit him right to the head, put a shoulder into the head, and that's something that the officials are taking a close look at this year. They're going to try to protect wide receivers. Number four, that play is under further review. So the question under review, that's Eiler Hardy, number four for Bowling Green. He's a graduate student. He played at Notre Dame, played 15 games the last two years, made two starts for the Irish back in 2013. He graduated from Notre Dame on August the 17th, started classes at Bowling Green on the 18th. And if they rule targeting on this play, Stanley, he's done for the game. Yeah, you know, it's, it's always a difficult decision for the defensive back in that position. The ball is still in play, but whenever you engage with the head of the receiver or the quarterback or the running back. After further review, the targeting call is confirmed. Number four is disqualified from the game. There's a 15-yard penalty and an automatic first down. Yeah, it's a good call. I mean, he clearly hit the head of the wide receiver. I mean, it's a tough position you're in as a defensive back, as the receiver is falling to the ground. You're still trying to break up the pass, but you've got to do everything in your power to avoid the head, and he didn't that time. So Eiler Hardy's day is done. Dominique Young is still down on the field. We'll come back to Purdue. Bowling Green leads 14-7. Well, the coaching staff yesterday, Daryl Hazel and offensive coordinator John Shoup said they were excited to see what David Blau could do. They've always known what D'Angelo Yancey can do. This is a veteran wide receiver, the two hook up to tie it at 14. They, they said he was a confident young man, felt like he could lead this team to a victory today. Look, that's the way you get it going. Very accurate throw right there. He's got one touchdown on the ground, second one through the air. It's a good start to his career here at Purdue. Kick is fielded two yards deep and taken out to the 20, 25, and across the 25-yard line. Robbie Rhodes brings it out, and here's another look. See, bottom receiver runs the post route right there. David does a good job of holding the safety to his right. Just a quick peek, gets enough space to throw that ball in there, and then you get the run after the catch. And again, Bowling Green will play the rest of the game without their starting safety, Eiler Hardy, who was ejected for the targeting hit. And so now, you mentioned it, it, it Purdue went right at it, at that position. Yeah, you have to. Anytime there's a switch in the second there, you've got to test it, especially when it's the guy in the middle of the field. So it's a great call, great read and throw by David. On first down, Bowling Green, now they'll look, and Roger Lewis, that pass is overthrown. Good coverage by Anthony Brown. Second down now for the Falcons. And just great coverage right there. Straight man-to-man -man cover one. Sometimes you got to be able to pick them up and put them down and run with that wide receiver. It was good coverage there. Dino Babers has a lot of offensive influence. He was four years an assistant under Art Bryles at Baylor, but you go way back, June Jones, Homer Smith, Dick Tomey. He was with John Cooper at Arizona State. My partner Stanley Jackson played for Coach Cooper at Ohio State. That pass is complete. Lewis the catch, but it'll be third down now for Bowling Green. So a lot of things have gone into how Dino Babers wants to play offense. Yeah, he's been around a lot of coaches, but you talked about him at, with uh, Art Browse and Baylor, that up-tempo, fast-paced offense. That's what he, he's really adopted here, and it's been very successful for them this season. Third down and 10, Bowling Green at their own 27. And again, we see five wide receivers. In fact, running back Travis Green is split out here to the near side. Seven defensive backs for Purdue, and it's complete. And should be enough for a first down right at the sticks. It's Ryan Burbrink. It's tough when you, you only rush three and you don't get any pressure. And when you have a really good quarterback like Matt Johnson, when he gets to sit back there, he will find somebody in that zone. Did a good job picking up the first down. And Burbrink is that guy over the middle, finds the seams. First down and 10, 42-yard line for the Falcons. We're tied at 14, just over 10 minutes to play. First half here at ross Aid Stadium in West Lafayette, Indiana. That's Ronnie Moore out to the 45-yard uh, line. 5'9", junior out of Sanford, Florida. 
is uh, playing with a heavy heart. He lost his dad. He was killed in May, and he said he has dedicated this season to him. Gary Dieter steps out of bounds, but not before he has the first down at the 50-yard line. Look, this team, they don't waste time at all. When the whistle is blown, they are snapping the football. As Purdue defense, you've got to get set up. That's the third time they caught them off guard and not ready to play. And every time they do it, they get a positive play. Greg Hudson told us yesterday if they have the chance to substitute, they will substitute the entire defensive line. Pass complete to Green. And Green knocked down after a gain of three. They call their substitution if they have the chance, Blackhawk, because the Blackhawks won the Stanley Cup title. <laughs> did. And it's not just one guy that they substitute. When they make that call, they want four fresh defensive linemen in because they have to keep those guys fresh so they can get after the quarterback. Yeah, it's a hockey line change. And that pass is intercepted by Frankie Williams. Second turnover of the day for Bowling Green. And in his 31st consecutive start, Frankie Williams with the interception. You talked about it earlier. This is a team that likes to take the ball away. 20 consecutive takeaways. Frankie's in the right place at the right time. Inaccurate throw. You got a pick. Here comes Purdue offense. Purdue takes advantage of the turnover and on their first play from scrimmage. D.J. Knox runs for 13 yards and a first down. And it was their best run of the day. He picked up about 11 yards on that carry, and that's something that Purdue is hoping to get established because, again, that takes a lot of pressure off your young quarterback. And Knox again out near midfield. Purdue scored on a short field, taking advantage of the first turnover. They'll have a little bit longer to go, but they're already out near midfield. On second down now for the Boilermakers. Yeah, we got an opportunity to spend some time with Coach John Shoup, you know, the, the mad scientist of offense. And I, I, you, know, you gotta appreciate what he does here. Early in the game, Purdue was trying to run the ball in between tackles. The last two carries have been to the edge because they haven't had success in the middle. That's a coach seeing what the defense is giving you and running plays that will work. Plenty of running room for Knox. He has the first down out to the 31-yard line. D.J. Knox comes in, having rushed for 209 yards on the year. And a penalty flag, though, could bring this back. The offense was lined up in the backfield. Five-yard penalty, second down. So a procedure call against the Bullermakers, and that's a critical penalty for Purdue. Yeah, that hurts you because you had sudden change. Your offense is moving. But again, that talks about having a young quarterback that hadn't played a lot. Wasn't like anybody was moving, just too many guys lined up in the backfield. You know, as a quarterback, you come up to the line, you got to scan all your guys, make sure everybody's lined up properly before you snap the ball. And that was unfortunate for this Purdue offense. Second and 12 now, ball at the 45 yard line. Tied at 14 here in West Lafayette. Wow. Hits Cameron Posey for the first time, and Posey. Has the first down out to the 40-yard line. Posey is a junior out of Boca Raton, Florida. That's his eighth catch of the year and a 16-yard gain for Purdue. Yeah, just a good call. When you're Alfonso Mack, the corner out there, you've got two receivers, and one's going to block you and catch a, a well, the other's going to catch the ball at the line of scrimmage. It's tough to defend that. Really like that call from the Purdue coaching staff. And for the second straight week, Bowling Green is without Daryl Hunter. He suffered a head and neck injury in the second half of the Maryland win. So now without Hunter, without Hardy, as Knox to the 35-yard line. So Bowling Green has two of their starters in the secondary. Stanley out now. And that's a huge problem for this defense. We talked to their coaching staff. That was one of their concerns. They have a young secondary, and now depth becomes an issue. And you start getting guys hurt or ejected from games, that changes how you call plays, and it changes how your defense plays and how they communicate when the safety is out. Two slot receivers, four wide receivers for Purdue on second down. Blau on fake over the middle. Complete to the running back. Knocks out of the backfield. Gain of three. I, I like this up-tempo for Purdue. I mean, it, it allows players to just play sometimes. They're not thinking a bunch. They're reacting. 
And for a quarterback, David looks like he's in a great rhythm right now. He's finding the right guy. They're able to run the ball effectively. They're not forcing the ball downfield. This is a good offense for Purdue right here. This is this up tempo is really working for them today. Third and short now. Brown will stay in the shotgun. Play clock counting down to four. Out of the pocket. Blau. Complete. And that's Gregory Phillips for a first down. Yeah, I'm not sure if that play was caught from the sideline, but it looked like Blau was communicating a little bit. You see full action roll to the right here. It's going up against cover zero. There was a blitz. That's how you protect your quarterback by moving the line, moving his position in a pocket. Good accurate throw, and it's a great read by David. This kid's putting together a really good game for his first start here for Purdue. Phillips is the eighth different receiver to catch a pass today for Purdue. Just outside the red zone on first down. And Knox is back in. And the Boilermakers have the football and a chance to take the lead with any kind of points here. And the story through the first three weeks for the Boilermakers, Stanley, has been they've been a good first half team. Their problems have been in the third quarter. That's what hurt them last week the turnovers and the third quarter play against Virginia Tech. Turning over the football, not finishing games. That's been a problem for this football team. And look, I don't want anybody to be confused about this situation. The quarterback race was really tight through camp. Coach Hazel let us know that David was right there. And so when Austin began to turn the football over, it was an easy decision for them to give David this opportunity. He looks really good today. We have an injured player on the field for Bowling Green. We'll take the break. 14-14, 5.28 to play, second quarter. All day long, we've talked about the obvious storyline, the play of the quarterbacks, the veteran for Bowling Green, Matt Johnson, and the redshirt freshman, David Blau. Stanley, you were a quarterback of the Big Ten at Ohio State. Blau in his first start, 11 of 13, 118 yards and a touchdown. More importantly, no turnovers. Uh, yeah, he's just having an outstanding day for his first start. He's really matching, you know, Matt Johnson pound for pound here. Let's see if he can keep it up through the day. Knox to the 15-yard line, third down, gain of one. Purdue today is three of six on third down. Boulder have rushed for about 50 yards. They pass for the 118. And the Falcons will put a new defensive end in. Four wide receivers on third down. Five yards to go at the Bowling Green 15. Plow has time and finds his receiver. It's Phillips again. And a first down for Purdue. A gain of 10. It, it is easy to see why the coaching staff felt really good about David coming in here. A traditional cover three here in the red zone, that means the corner is going to back off because he has the deep third. And whenever you have an out route there, you just throw an accurate ball. He does a good job of holding the safety down the middle. Throws an accurate strike to pick up the first down on that out route. Purdue again coming in was just 33% through the first three games on third down. Four of seven today. Knox has it. He fights his way down to the two-yard line. D.J. Knox has been a workhorse this afternoon. That's his 10th carry. That name just sounds like he's going to be working in the night for D.J. Knox. But I tell you, this kid is special. He's got great vision, good feet. He's what you call a jitterbug back there. Back, he's a guy that just shifts really quickly once he sees a lane. And he's been putting together a good campaign this season. And you may have a young quarterback and young running backs, but this is a veteran offensive line. All five starters returning from a year ago. Knox, maybe a gain of one, but nearly back to the three-yard line. So no gain on second down. Now third down for Purdue. I don't think you have to panic here. I think, you know, the way the coaching staff is calling it, this may be an opportunity for, to go for it on fourth down to get points. So you want to be smart with the ball. If you're David here, you don't want to force anything. You want to leave this situation with some kind of points here. But you may get man-to-man -man coverage. So I look for one of my better wide receivers, a guy that I feel real comfortable with, and give him an opportunity to catch it. Good long drives for Purdue. This is the 12th play of this drive. And... Daryl Hazel and the Boilers are going to let the play clock wind down, and they'll take the timeout with 2.48 to play here in the second quarter. Again, knocking on the door. 
The Boilermakers trying to take their first lead of the afternoon. We're tied at 14 second quarter at Ross 8 Stadium. The United States Marine Corps leader of the game is Purdue center Robert Kugler, the fifth year senior from Pittsburgh, graduated last spring with a double major in history and political science. This week, he was named a semifinalist for the William V. Campbell Trophy, which recognizes athletics, academics, leadership, and community service. And early in this game, when Blau fumbled the football, it was his center that recovered it. Why is he underachieving? 3.85? <laughs> Where's that other 15 points? Come on. Third down and goal. Wow. Hand off to Knox. He's tripped up short of the goal line. And in fact, no gain. And now on fourth down, they took the timeout. There was maybe a thought about using the two downs to go for a touchdown. But they have Paul Griggs, who is in. And he'll attempt the field goal. Last year he was 16 of 20 with three of 50 yards or more. It's been a struggle here early for Griggs, just three of six. Yeah, I think you got to get the points here. If you have better production on that third down play, maybe get it to the half inch line, you might consider going for it. But this is a good call. Get the points, take the lead. Dino Babers and the Bowling Green Falcons take the timeout. We'll come back to 25 to play. First half, we're tied at 14. Paul Griggs is on for the field goal that would give Purdue its first lead of the afternoon. Thomas Meadows will hold. And the ball is up and no good. Griggs continues to struggle for the Boulder A 20-yard field goal. And Griggs, the senior out of Charlotte, North Carolina, fails to give Purdue the lead. Yeah, that, that's a tough one right there. Defense does their job. They get a turnover. You drive downfield. You got to have points here. And I think it just pushed it a little bit. And it's close, but he just pushed it right past the bar to his right. It's tough when you're a kicker. You sit on the bench for a while. One thing you got to do is hit a kick, but that may be a big loss not getting those points right there for the Boilermakers. And so Bowling Green escapes after the turnover, the pass interception. Long drive took a lot of took a lot of time off the clock. Coming up next, our Buffalo Wild Wings halftime report. Dave Revson, Jerry DiNardo, Howard Griffith in Chicago in our studios. As on first down and 10, Bowling Green completes the pass for the first down to Gary Dieter. Look, this is an important possession here for the Purdue defense. We talked about at the end of halves, not finishing well. You can't let Bowling Green go down here and take the lead. You got to get them off the field here. Dieter has great size at six foot three, has made back to back catches, and the Falcons out to the 43 yard line. Johnson dumps the ball to his running back, Travis Green. Plenty of running room, and knocked out of bounds at the 35. So another first down for Bowling Green. Three straight passes. This one good for 22 yards. Just good patience by Matt Johnson. Purdue was in a cover three. Nobody got to the flat. So that's where he went with the ball and picked up a bunch of yards. And Dieter has it again. And down to the 28-yard line. A seven-yard gain. Dino Babers, Coach Jimmy Garoppolo, now the backup quarterback to Tom Brady in New England when he was a head coach at Eastern Illinois, and that pass complete. Burbrink has it. All through the air for Bowling Green. I'd say when this offense gets going, they get going. They pick up yards and chunks, and they put your defense on your heels. And now the run from Green, 10, 5. And he fights his way down to the two-yard line. Yeah, defense is just in tough position. You're only rushing three. You, you sort of clear the box because you think they're throwing the ball over the place, and then they hit you with the sprint draw, and then that cracks you for 15 yards. I mean, it is tough when this offense really gets going. And I, I was going to say it last time when Bowling Green had the ball. If you haven't seen Matt Johnson play, you need to take a look at him a lot more. He is as good as there is a quarterback around the country. He's accurate. 
He throws great balls. He reads well. He's really good. 23 of 29 through the air, 243 yards. They keep it on the ground, and the second time that Donovan Wilson has crashed into the end zone. And Bowling Green takes advantage of a missed Paul Griggs field goal that almost was like an extra point. And the Falcons back in front, 2014. That's a 10 point swing in a matter of 60 seconds. You want to be better on defense. And it's just tough. You see a power right there to the left. Great lead at the point of attack. Gets the running back into the end zone. And that Purdue defense looked a little deflated after they missed that field goal. Tyler Tate on for the point after to cap a seven play 80 yard drive that took just one minute and 19 seconds. And the Falcons have a 21 14 lead. It happened to Purdue last week at the end of the first half. It led to a disastrous third quarter. And you just, if you're a Purdue fan, you have to hope that Daryl Hazel, they still have 102 to play here in the quarter, can rally his his guys in the locker room because it's almost like deja vu. Right, you're holding your breath right now. You're hoping that you don't have a repeat from last week's performance against Virginia Tech. And look, you bet you there's a minute on the clock. David Blau has been playing well. There's an opportunity to go down here and get some points or at least put yourself in position to take a long kick. And I, I think that will hold well for this team going into the locker room. The worst thing that could happen here is a three and out, and you put that Bowling Green offense back on the field with about 40 seconds to go. This is the first time in history that Bowling Green has beaten the Big Ten team in back-to-back -back seasons. Last year, they beat Indiana. What about early this year on September the 12th? The Falcons used their high-flying offense to put away the Maryland Terrapins. And so uh, nothing new for Bowling Green as far as a Big Ten team is concerned. Tate is on to kick. Bullemakers have Amprim and Knox back deep to return the kick. And Knox will take it at the two. 10 20. And gets out to the 22 yard line. We go back to week two, September 12th. Falcons on the road. College Park, Maryland. They use their high flying offense to put away the Terrapins. Matt Johnson threw five of his six touchdown passes in the second half. A pair of those scores to top target Roger Lewis as Bowling Green won 48 27. There's a long day for those cornerbacks of Maryland right there. Whenever you see a corner put his arms out like that and look to the safety, you know he's had a long day. 55 seconds to play. Blau has had a good first half for Purdue. And he looks out to the flat. The catch is made. It's Hunter Folksma, tight end out of Grand Rapids, Michigan. Folksma makes the catch. And a first down for Purdue, 47 seconds to play. Let's see if the Boilers can get it down. They've already had a Hail Mary pass at the end of a first half this year. That was Austin Appleby. Now Blau in the middle of the field. It'll be short of a first down, so the clock will continue to run. Daryl Hazel has a couple of timeouts in his pocket. A first down would stop the clock momentarily, and that's what the Boilers are looking for, and that pass is dropped. That will also stop the clock. It's incomplete to Markel Jones. At 21 seconds, still enough time at least to put yourself possibly in position to, like you said, throw a Hail Mary or get an opportunity to kick another field goal. You need probably another 30 yards here. Let's see if David can get it done. Back at the end of the first half against Indiana State, it was Appleby connecting with Dan Monteroso on a 51-yard Hail Mary pass at the end of the first half. Wow. Runs the football and gets out of bounds to stop the clock. Oh, yeah. Good decision by David right there. Nowhere to go with the ball. You got a chance to pick it up on the ground and get out of bounds and stop the clock. Good smart decision by a young quarterback. Clock down to 14 seconds. Again, if you're just joining us, uh, Purdue wearing the fluorescent green all over. Uh, hammer down cancer week here at Purdue. All at the 46. 
first down. Blau. Complete to Jones. Jones to the 49. And Daryl Hazel uses one of his two timeouts with eight seconds to play in the half. Busy fourth weekend of college football coming up next. Our Buffalo Wild Wings halftime report will head to Chicago with Dave Revson, Jerry DiNardo, and Howard Griffith. Non-conference play next week starts Big Ten head-to-head -head action. Stanley will be in the studio in Chicago, and the guys will be on site at Maryland for Jim Harbaugh's Big Ten conference debut. Yeah, you know, whenever the A-team gets to go on the road, then, you know, somebody's got to fill the void. I, I wonder what Coach DiNardo is wearing today. I wonder what kind of tie he has on today there in Chicago. David Blau and the Boilermakers have looked good offensively here in the first half. Again, the redshirt freshman out of Carrollton, Texas, making his debut. And Blau today, 15 of 18, 148 yards and a touchdown. He's also rushed seven times for 16 yards. He's doing a great job. And, and even here, you want to finish the half strong. Look, don't throw an interception. Don't turn the ball over. You get the ball to start the second half. You're in this fight because you've played well. Be smart here in the last seconds. Taking advantage of two Bowling Green turnovers this afternoon. Blau forced out of the pocket, and he stays on his feet and is going to go down as the time expires. More importantly, held on to the football, but good momentum for the Bowling Green Falcons as they watch Purdue miss a field goal and then marched it down the field in a minute 19 to take the lead. We played one half at Ross 8 Stadium in West Lafayette. Bowling Green has the lead, 21-14 on BTN. BTN is brought to you by Auto Owners Insurance, the no problem people. Find your agent at autoowners.com. And by Dollar Shave Club, shave time, shave money. We get ready for the second half on the campus of Purdue University. 21-14, Bowling Green has the lead as we get ready to start the third quarter. BTN football is presented by the United States Marine Corps. With Stanley Jackson, I'm Kristen Ayer. Let's look at the first half numbers. Big advantage in yardage as far as Bowling Green is concerned. 243 yards through the air, but they have the two turnovers, the fumble and the pass interception. Purdue has had the ball almost 18 minutes, Bowling Green 12. The turnovers help Purdue. The missed field goal, Stanley, helped Bowling Green. There are two things that I think are important here for Purdue. I'm going to circle them. One, right there, no turnovers. And two, time of possession. Whenever that offense is out in the field, that means that Bowling Green offense is watching from the sideline. And I think Purdue has done a really good job here. They've got a couple of opportunities that they lost. I'm sure they were kicking themselves about at halftime. But the key for them is to start this half fast so they don't have a repeat of last week and that fall apart in the third quarter. Clearly no disappointment from Daryl Hazel and his staff, what they have seen from number 11, David Blau. A terrific first half with the numbers that he put up. Was sacked twice, threw for a touchdown, 15 of 18 through the air. Tate the kick. And it is through the end zone, and Purdue has it first and 10 at their own 25. And this is the important quarter now for Purdue because they have struggled in the third quarter this year, and uh, that, that's where they lost the game a week ago against Virginia Tech. It's been a problem for them, and it's just like starting the first half. You want to get off quick. You want to have production offensively. And I'll tell you, in talking to the coaching staff yesterday, you mentioned it, they were really confident in young David Blau playing, and we were wondering why. Well, in the first half, I think he showed us why they really believe in him. Purdue outscored 34-14 in the third quarter previous three games, 58-31 in the second half. They've had good starts and a decent start in the first half today. DJ Knox gets his first carry of the second half. He rushed for 35 yards in the first half. But again, Knox has run the football effectively for uh, almost five yards per carry coming in. Just a little over two and a half yards and another carry. Markel Jones, the ball carrier. And it is, a, uh, it is Markel Jones. So Jones gets the start in the second half, not Knox. 
And Jones in the first half had just three carries for nine yards. Again, he's Mr. Indiana football. Rush for 3,500 yards last year and 60 touchdowns. He's in the backfield with Blau. Third down. Purdue was five of nine in the first half, and Blau has a receiver over the middle, and it's Yancey. That just great design of that play. You saw motion to the right out of the quarterback. He whips around back to his left. Yancey runs what we call a deep comeback. Just runs a great route. It's a good, accurate throw to pick up a really important third down for Purdue. A 22-yard pass play. They've been very good. Six of ten now on third down. They came in today at just 33%. Play action pass and Blau's looking for Yancey again, and it just is beyond his reach. Yeah, I like that. I like taking a shot. That's the first time Purdue really has thrown the ball down the sideline. They got man to man coverage, and just a little more air on that throw, and you might have a big completion. That's why it's a game of inches, but it's just right past his fingertips there. Yeah, the 45 yard pass in the first half was really a lot about the run for Yancey. Right. Blau has scored a rushing touchdown, thrown for a touchdown, and he goes over the middle, and that's out of the backfield. And again, that's Markel Jones who gets the start, gain of seven here in the second half. Freshman out of Columbus, Indiana. And that's been a really good play for them. Hey, look, that's your check down route. You always like to have that for your quarterback. So as those linebackers begin to get depth to take away the throwing lanes past 10 yards, just dunk it down to your little scat back. He turns around, picks up another three yards, and gets you in third and very makeable down in distance. Full substitution for Bowling Green. They brought five new defenders in. Anthrop in motion. Blau looks to Anthrop, and the senior out of Lafayette Central Catholic High School makes the catch. His younger brother rushed for six touchdowns last night. It's an Anthrop family that has deep ties to Purdue. Yeah, it's a young man that grew up playing right in the backyard. You see it's a man coverage because the corner is trailing. A little pick play right there. Get Anthrop on the edge. He's a guy that they expect a lot from as he continues to recover from the knee injury from a year ago. A gain of 13 yards. Suffered an ACL injury last year. Did not complete the season. And Posey has the catch, Cameron Posey for a second time. Purdue had eight different receivers catch passes in the first half. A gain of one. Yeah, Davis doing a good job of spreading it out. But the bigger deal is he's just taking what the defense gives. He's not forcing any throws downfield. When the backs are there, he's checking it down. And I think Coach Shoup is doing a really good job of play calling and helping David out today. And Stanley, this has been a much faster game than we anticipated. Bowling Green averages four hours and four minutes. Both quarterbacks have been highly efficient. Not very many incomplete passes. This one, though, nearly picked off. It hit the ground. It was intended for Markel Jones. So just as I say that, then Bowling Green gets some pressure. Yeah, they got a little pressure. That, that play we just saw a minute ago where they ran that option, action to the right. Quarterback sneaks out the back end. The defensive end did a really good job of having active hands and knocking that ball down. James Sanford, a redshirt junior out of Xenia, Ohio, number 35 for Bowling Green, tipped the ball. And now third down, nine yards to go. Wow, over the top for Yancey. He can't reach it. It's incomplete. Yeah, that's a, that was a missed opportunity there. Yancey ran a nice slant and go route. And Blau just has to recognize as he plays more games, sometimes you just put a little more air on that ball to get the completion. You see Blau looking at it, just really close to being a touchdown right there. And Yancey fell hard to the turf. When he hit the turf in the end zone, I thought he was mad that he didn't catch it. But it's his shoulder, and he is down. It's always a danger for wide receivers when they're laying out and all that weight comes down on the shoulder. Uh, let's hope it's not too serious, but it is definitely a shoulder. D'Angelo Yancey coming in, had a touchdown against Indiana State. He added a touchdown this afternoon, a 45-yard pass, catch, and run. And David will go back to the film, and I guarantee you, Chris, he'll kick himself about those last two opportunities to Yancey. Just a little more air on those balls. 
and, and he has a touchdown pass. But it's a great route there by Yancey. Just a slant and go. Got the corner looking in at the quarterback, set of his feet, and got over the top. Just missed the throw there. Just another look at it. Nice tight spiral. And just you talk about a game of inches, then all that weight just comes down on that right shoulder. And you see him grab it right away. That would be the second wide receiver that Purdue would lose today. Dominic Young was injured in the first half when Eiler Hardy was ejected for targeting back in the second quarter. The good news is they've, th they've thrown the football to about yeah, 15 it. different guys <laughs> today. So there's a guy who's got plenty of talent out there to catch the football. And on fourth down, Purdue will go. Again, Paul Griggs. Missed a 20 yard field goal attempt back near the end of the second quarter. And now the 10th play of this second half opening drive and a timeout called by Bowling Green. So the Falcons use one of their three second half timeouts. We'll take a break on the opening drive of the second half. We'll come back to fourth down with Purdue trailing by seven. Third quarter is underway here in West Lafayette, Indiana. Ross 8 Stadium, Bowling Green 21, Purdue 14. Falcons scored at the end of the first half after Paul Griggs missed a 20-yard field goal for the Boilermakers. That would have given Purdue its first lead. And so now on fourth down and nine, Daryl Hazel goes for it. They are two of two today on fourth down. Wow. Looks complete. Anthrop has it. Anthrop has the first down. Inside the 10, down to the six-yard line. And Blau, the freshman, stayed in there under pressure. Stayed in the pocket. He didn't panic. He let the route run its course into a very accurate ball to a guy that they're expecting big things from. Anthrop looks really healthy. That knee looked pretty good in that out route. And afterwards, making a couple guys miss to pick up a couple more yards. Stan, I like what you say as a former uh, Big Ten quarterback. You have to trust your receiver to run that route, right? Absolutely. You have to believe that they're going to be in the right place at the right time. You throw a great time and an accurate ball, and you get great results. Blau has some help from his offensive line to the five-yard line. Again, Cameron Sermon, Jordan Roos, Robert Kugler, Jason King and David Hedlund are the five that returned from a year ago. This is a veteran offensive line that Dino Babers and his defense is facing. And this would be a big win for Daryl Hazel to get that record to two and two prior to opening the Big Ten season next week at Michigan State. Handoff goes to Jared Burgess and he's in the end zone. Jared Burgess is a 25-year-old freshman out of Miami, Florida. He had a run last week for 29 yards. This is a former baseball player. It's just a great call right there. Just a jet sweep by the outside wide receiver. Put the quarterback under center so the handoff point is behind him. And then you've got the caravan out in front. All he has to do is make a good cut to get to the end zone. It's just another good call by Coach Shoot. He's done a really good job calling plays here today. He never played football in high school. His dad and uncle played in the NFL, and this young man who was thinking baseball has just scored his first touchdown, capping a 12-play, 75-yard drive in four minutes and 15 seconds. On the sweep, Burgess gets the score, but the key play came on fourth down. Blau finding Danny Anthrop, 10.45 to play in the third. Bowling Green and Purdue tied at 21. Makers have tied it for the third time this afternoon at 21. Kristen Airy and Stanley Jackson on this beautiful Saturday afternoon in West Lafayette, Indiana. Bowling Makers and the Falcons both one and two, both trying to get to the 500 mark before their respective conference season start. Bowling Green out of the Mid-American Conference. Purdue, of course, a long-time Big Ten member, and this ball taken out of the end zone. And a good tackle, but a penalty flag on the field. That was Robbie Rhodes with the return. And much better coverage there out of Purdue. That was one of the question marks coming into the game. During the return, block in the back by the return team, number four. Half the distance to the goal, first down Bowling Green. You see the block in the back, this one 
Holt Campbell came in to make the stop. And so the Falcons will have the football deep in their own territory at the seven. And again, it was Purdue on fourth down converting a big play. See a combination route. You have a go on the outside. Danny Etling is running his out route. Watch how he runs, sets up the stem, sticks it and gets out. He had a matchup against a linebacker. That's something Purdue would take every day. That was a great route on a big fourth down pickup. And now first down, first possession for Bowling Green. And Fred Coppett is the tailback to start the second half for the Falcons. Bowling Green comes in averaging 40 points per game. They give up 43. Purdue a 31 point average. They give up 35.3. And again, third quarters have been an issue for the Boulder through the first three games. Falcons marched it down the field at the end of the first half in one minute and 19 seconds to score the touchdown that gave them the lead at the half. Yeah, when they get it going, their offense is really good. Their quarterback makes great decisions. He throws accurate balls. So you got to get to him. Got to get some pressure on him. And that will help Purdue here in the second half. Now a run by Coppett after Dieter made the catch for a first down. Gain of six. Dino Babers in his second season. He was an assistant coach here at Purdue back in 1991 through 93. He was the receivers coach for Jim Coletto. One of his many stops as an assistant. We talked to him the other day. He got his first head coaching job at Eastern Illinois when he was 50 years old. Coach Jimmy Garoppolo and said he was not going to leave for any job but felt the Bowling Green job was perfect for he and his family. Johnson has time out of the pocket, has some running room and will slide to the 40-yard line. <laughs> Just a fantastic job by Johnson. You always have to be a dual threat running quarterback just subtle moves in the pocket give yourself a little space then he stepped up the red seat part and he's able to pick up enough yards to get them second down and one and again they spot the ball at the 38 that's where he hit cop it he is going to be shut back to the 35 but they'll spot it just shy of the 39 yard line that's it Danny Easy Chuku came in to make the stop. He had the 90 yard fumble return last week for a touchdown against Virginia Tech. Yeah, I got to tell you, Matt is impressive. I mean, he, he doesn't force anything, but one thing you'll notice that's different with him, he runs the entire offense. He makes every check. He doesn't look to the sideline for coaches' help. He's in complete control, and as long as Purdue stays in this cover three, he's going to carve him up. Two yard gain for Coppett. That's enough for a first down. Bowling Green moves the chains. A couple of weeks ago at Maryland in their Big Ten win, they ran 105 plays and now penalty flag. Fall star offense, number 71, five yard penalty, first down. And it gives Purdue a chance to uh, make their Blackhawk line change just like hockey as Rajon Howard comes in with Jalen Robinson. Boldermakers will rotate eight players along the front. Johnson. Robinson forces the pass to the sideline, and Roger Lewis makes the catch. This kid is good. I mean, a lot of times quarterbacks that are that traditionally throw from the pocket don't throw as well on the run, but there he was being chased, and uh, he threw an absolute dime as he was running towards his right. I mean, he, he is a complete quarterback. I, I am curious to see where the NFL scouts have him rated. I, I think he's a guy that definitely can play on Sundays. Has thrown for over 5,000 yards in his career. Again, injured his hip in game one last year, sat out the year, now tosses over the middle. It's complete to Ronnie Moore, and Moore knocked backwards. No game. And now another third down situation for Bowling Green. Much better by the Purdue defense right there. That's a lot. That's a play they had a lot of success with in the first half, that bubble screen. But you saw the defensive lineman figure it out, run down the ball, and get the tackle. Falcons are five of seven on third down today. And wide open is Coppett. And Coppett gets close to the first down. We'll see where they spot the football. Right about the 49-yard line. It looks like it may be a yard short. A gain of 11. 
Yeah, you talk about the patience of a quarterback. Just sitting back there, you see cover three, there's no flat defender. He flips it out there to his big back. Put yourself in position to pick up a fourth down. Falcons have already used one of their three timeouts here in the second half. Fourth and short, Bowling Green. Johnson now looks to the sideline. Play clock down to eight. Ross Eight Stadium crowd making a lot of noise. Johnson looks. Pass is incomplete and hit the ground on fourth down. Purdue gets the ball. Just great coverage right there by Leroy Clark. Purdue dialed up that zero covered man and came through with a big fourth down conversion. So a huge turnaround. Purdue will have the ball in Bowling Green turnover in, in territory looking for their first lead. Fourth down stop for the Purdue Boilermakers. Yeah, Purdue, they called cover zero, nobody in the middle, nine guys in the box, and it was straight man to man. It was just great coverage there by Leroy Clark, getting a hand around there to pull that ball out and secure getting Bowling Green off the field. Not really a reaction from Dino Babers again. He has that high-powered offense and uh, no thought process about punting. In fact, we've had just one punt this afternoon. That was a Purdue punt. And D.J. Knox is wrestled out of bounds, and that's a loss back into Purdue territory. Bowling Green did a much better job there of not getting hooked at the edge so that Purdue couldn't get around the corner right there, and they just... A lot of speed there on that edge, getting there, just forcing the running back to go out of bounds. Loss of three, and that was Ben Hale that made the stop. He came in for Eiler Hardy, who was ejected for a targeting call back in the first half in the secondary for Bowling Green. They're also playing without quarterback Daryl Hunter. Wow. To the short man, and his running back out of the backfield is Knox, a gain of one, and now third and long for Purdue. They've not had many third and long situations. They're seven of 12 on third down today. And that's a really good percentage when you factor in the first three weeks, they were 33%. Oh, that's a great percentage, especially when you're playing a first time starter, or a young quarterback. And a part of that is due to the great play calling, but also they didn't have a lot of third and longs throughout this game. Four wide receivers, three here to the near side as Blau on third down, chased out of the pocket, and he will fall to the ground. That's a sack. And it's Taylor Royster making the play. A redshirt senior out of Lima, Ohio. It's one of the few times you see that twist right there inside to bring that defensive tackle around the edge. When those big guys get those hands on you, it's tough to break away sometimes. It's a great play by Royster. Third sack of the day for Bowling Green. That's six and a half now for Taylor Royster in his career and forces the second punt of the afternoon from freshman Joe Shopper. He had a 44-yarder back in the first half. He took over for Thomas Meadows. Had a punt blocked last week, returned for a score by Virginia Tech. A fair catch called by Burbrink. And Bowling Green will again start deep in their own territory. 46-yard punt by Shopper. 21 apiece on BTN. College coaching business, yes, it is a small fraternity. Earlier we told you Dino Baber spent a few years here at Purdue. He was an assistant to Jim Coletto. His offensive line and tight end coach Tom Freeman was the offensive line coach for the Boilers back in 91 through 96. And on the Purdue side, you have a couple of coaches that spent time in Bowling Green, Ohio. The, the coaching fraternity, it's small and tight knit. Travis Green gets the carry on first down for Bowling Green. I like what I see out of Purdue's defense now. You know, throughout the first half, at the beginning of this quarter, they were running a lot of zone, a lot of cover three. Well, they've gotten out of that at times and went to more of a man coverage, tighter coverage on the outside, and that's helped them a little bit. And there's that shovel pitch pass to Derek Lee, who played two years at North Dakota State then transferred to Butler Community College, then had to figure out he had one year of eligibility and Bowling Green, he, this young man, 58 college credits in the last year. He took 18 hours last spring, 18 hours this summer 
just so he could be eligible to play his final year of college football. Oh, that's impressive. That, that's a determined young man. Incomplete pass intended for Roger Lewis. Uh, you saw the shots of Dino Babers and Daryl Hazel. In fact, uh, Daryl Hazel, uh, back in the 80s, took Dino Babers' place on the staff at Eastern Illinois. That's how interconnected. They never coached together, but uh, interconnected through their stints at Eastern Illinois. And of course, Babers then was the head coach. Pass complete to Green, and he dances his way near a first down. The green is shifty. I mean, that's what you like to do at times. When you got playmakers, you just want to get them the ball in space so that they can make guys miss and pick up good yards. Green is really good after he catches the ball. And penalty flags again. Again, Bowling Green coming in, one of the most penalized football teams in FBS through the first three weeks. Which is odd for their team because their coach believes in this. They've had double figure penalties in each of the first three weeks. And uh, they've had penalties today. That's six now for more than 50 yards. Third down and six. The ball at the Bowling Green, 26. Five wide receivers. Johnson out of the pocket, looking to scramble. Has the first down and out of bounds. Again, for a guy that's considered a traditional pocket passer, he's come up with three or four huge plays with his legs today to move the chains and pick up the first down. Again, got great pressure initially, but he's able to make a guy miss, get to the edge, and pick up the first down. Nine yards on the run for Johnson. Ball out at the 35-yard line. Now that pitch pass again, shovels it ahead to Lee. Yeah, it's just great, you know, design of offensive plays. They run that speed option about three times today. Then after the defense begins to over-pursue the speed option, they hit you right out the back door with that shovel pass. It's been very effective for them here today. And, and thus far, you'd have to say that the Boilermakers have done a pretty good job taking care of this guy, Roger Lewis. Yeah, he's made some catches, but no big yards. Right, no big explosive plays, nothing over the top. I, the defense has played well. Uh, it's been a, a good game for Purdue so far. It's just a few opportunities that I'm sure they'd love to have back, but you know, they're right in the mix here. And they're, they're in position to win this game, but they've got to get off the field right now on defense. That was the sixth catch for Lewis, but just 50 yards. He's had 200 or more yards each of the last two weeks. Ronnie Moore in space. And to the 39-yard line, the junior out of Sanford, Florida, has another Bowling Green first down. Yeah, just doing a really good job of getting to the edge, using their speed guys in a lot of different ways. They've got a really good offense. And that's another penalty flag. And that gives Purdue a chance to make some substitutions. Encroachment by the offense, number 17, lined up in the neutral zone. Five-yard penalty, first down. You want to know how the number one offense in the country is on a team that's only one and two? There you have it right there. I mean, the penalties just stack up for this team. And, and his offense is good enough that they overcome a lot of them. But at some point, you got to get better because you're going to lose more games. They are 0 and 2 in the state of Tennessee. They lost at Tennessee and lost last week in their home opener to Memphis, who's on a huge win streak. And the pass in the flat complete, Travis Green. And just does a good job of being patient, reading through the zone. Purdue ends up in cover three. Nobody gets way out to the flat on the wide side of the field. And Matt just chucks one out there for another completion. 19 yards on the pass play. First down. And now he just pops the ball to Moore. Moore has another first down. Inside the 15 to the 14. They have been very simple in what we've seen here in the third quarter. They've had that shovel pass to Lee and a couple of pitch plays now to Moore. Yeah, and that play right there is a little bit of cheating. You know, that play is new. Ohio State uses it a lot. It's that it's called a pass. So that, that ends up on the passing stats. It's really kind of a handoff, but it's designed to get to the edge. Cop it to the 10-yard line. Matt Johnson comes in averaging 49 passes per game. He's already thrown it 44 times today. He's 36 of 44 for 345 yards. Yeah, I mean, he's a, he's a football player. I mean, he's a really good quarterback.
that is leading this high-powered attack. Here's the good news for Purdue's defense, though. He's leading the nation with 12 touchdown passes, doesn't have one yet today. They've had two short runs by Donovan Wilson. And now Johnson forced out of the pocket, and he just has to throw it away. Good pressure by Jalen Robinson. And second down now. Make it third down now for Bowling Green. You see the pressure just coming off the right side of the field, number 13, push up the middle. He's just a smart quarterback. He doesn't force things. He knows he's got an opportunity. He's on his third down. We've got more plays to get a score here. I'm not going to force the ball. Throw it out of bounds. Yeah, it was Jake Replogle, number 54, that had the initial pressure, and now it's the 13th play of this drive. Play clock down to five, and Dino Babers and the Falcons will use their second timeout of the second half. And Purdue has had moments where they've gotten pressure on Matt. The challenge has been getting him to the ground. He's been breaking containment, picking up first downs. That time they did a much better job after they got the initial push through the middle of corralling him on the edge, so he had to throw the ball away. Well, as always, we have plenty more for you this afternoon. Big Ten football continues at 3.30 with both Penn State and Minnesota at home. Then in prime time, it's the Badgers taking on Hawaii, where some will see Northwestern hosting Ball State. Football today on BTN and BTN to go. Visit btn.com slash game finder to find the game in your market. Daryl Hazel and Purdue trying to force a field goal. Ohio State, Michigan State remain one and two Northwestern. Pat Fitzgerald has the Wildcats 17th and the Badgers are 22nd. You'll see both of those teams tonight. Third down. Johnson pitches out again to Lee and Lee bounces to the six yard line where he's short. Good job by Purdue to bottle up the middle. And now fourth down, a gain of five. That's the third time they've run that play in this drive. They like it. You got full flow to the right, hoping to get that Purdue defense to overflow. Puts him in position to make, pick up a fourth down. Not even a thought to kick. Johnson runs. Johnson fights his way to the four, but where will they spot his knee? The officials. The official, the line judge, comes over and spots the ball at the five. The marker is at the four. I'm sure, no, it's Purdue football. Yeah. No reason to look. That's, that's a great stop right there by the Purdue defense. Two back-to-back -back stops here. It's fourth down. He's been running that speed option. Just too many guys to the ball, getting them down, that knees down before he got to stretch it. Great play by the defense. Just speed option here to the right. He keeps it. Big play right there by number four, Jawan jo Bentley. Jawan Bentley makes the stop, so Johnson and the Bowling Green offense to the sidelines after a 14-play, 85-yard drive. And Purdue has the football deep in its own territory. The Boilermakers also playing without a couple of linebackers today. Jimmy Herman, the junior out of Carmel, a hamstring injury, and Marcus Bailey lost with an ACL. So Daryl Hazel, his defense, they had to dip a little deeper. We've seen a lot of nickel and dime today. And that's the end of the third quarter. And for David Blau and the Boilermakers, the third quarter has been an issue the first three weeks. Not so today. Tied at 21 in West Lafayette. A college football Saturday. BTN beat Bowling Green and Purdue. With Stanley Jackson, I'm Kristen Airy through three quarters. Purdue has never had the lead. They've had to tie it on three occasions. We're tied at 21. And this Ross 8 Stadium crowd is sensing that their team has some momentum. Two fourth down stops in the third quarter. And the Boilermakers have the ball to start the fourth. The two two back-to-back -back stops for this defense. And they're doing exactly what you want to do. Much better than third quarter. I think you can check that off the list now. Improved third quarter performance. Let's see if they can step it up in the fourth quarter and take control of this game. Now, where where did the rain come? We have we've had a little drizzle here. We had beautiful clear skies early, and now cloudy here 
in West Lafayette as we start our final 15 minutes of regulation. Tied at 21. Wow. Gregory Phillips is open. That's enough for a first down. Again, in talking to John Shoup and Daryl Hazel yesterday, they felt that those routes would be open as Bowling Green, like Purdue, they're going to give you that, that shot. Correct. Right. Soft corner play allows you to just throw a hitch out there or a curl to pick up a first down. And look, they were really confident about David Blau and how he would play today. And I was wondering why they were so confident, but this young man has really played well today in his debut as a starting quarterback for the Boilermakers. Forced out of the pocket, throws it complete. Tight end Jordan Jurasovic. And he's doing a good job. Nowhere really to go with the ball. He didn't force it. Worked through his progression. Moved himself in the pocket a little bit. Found his tight end for one yard. It's better than a loss and it's better than a turnover. He's doing a great job managing the game today. Stanley, as you look at this possession, because you know that Bowling Green can score from any place on the field, it's not just field position here. It's really scoring some points. Right. You want to get points here. We're into the fourth quarter. This Bowling Green offense is very good. And you want your defense to feel good about where you are. So you got to come away with this drive with points. And you want to milk the clock here. You, you want to take some of the air out of the ball so that Bowling Green doesn't have a bunch of time. Well, it's good to see D'Angelo Yancey back. He had left with a shoulder injury. He had that seven-yard reception as Blau gets out of bounds. He slips over on the Purdue sideline, but enough for a first down. And this is something that Purdue now has with this young quarterback. That's the added dimension. He can make plays with his legs. He's fast enough to get to the edge and pick up a first down. And when you're a young quarterback, you want to take advantage of every opportunity. Just take what the defense gives you and continue to move the chains. He's the eighth different quarterback since 2009 to start a game and throw. And that's going to be a penalty flag because the defender never turned back. You cannot face guard. And that was Ben Hale. Again, Hale is out there because Eiler Hardy was ejected back in the second quarter. And that's a penalty flag. And he did everything well. Pass interference. Defense number 38. 15-yard penalty. Automatic first down. He did everything well but turn and look for the football. He's running stride for stride with Anthrop. But right there, you got to turn around and get your head around. He started to do it, and then he stopped, and he reached up and knocked the ball down. That's pass interference every time. Like you said, Chris, you can't face guard. And that was a big play for this Purdue offense. Hale is a sophomore out of Columbus, Ohio. Now first down and 10 at the Boilermaker 43-yard line. Knox has the carry and fights his way out to the 49-yard line. That's a gain of six for the sophomore out of Fairburn, Georgia. 15 carries, just 39 yards today. But while the numbers aren't great rushing the football today, I think they've done enough to keep Bowling Green off balance. The balance is there, and, and that's what you want. And the confidence is starting to come for this team. They, they look a lot better right now here in the fourth quarter. They're starting to believe that they can win this game, and it's showing up on the field. Again, Purdue has never beaten Bowling Green. Falcons won back in 2003, 27-26 against a 16th-rated Purdue team. And then you go back some 40 years ago, back to 1972. Purdue was ranked 18th, and the Falcons won 17-14. That's a surprising stat. That really is the thing that they have never beaten Bowling Green. Now, now, mind you, haven't played that much, right. but you still would expect a W in there. Now third and short. Inside Falcons territory. And Knox, second effort, fights his way, but will not get there. And a decision now for Daryl Hazel and the Boilermakers. A loss of three to the 49-yard line, and they've got four yards to go. But I think you got to kick it here. Your defense has really stepped it up here in the second half, too. Back-to-back -back stops defensively. You hate to put them in a bad position after they played so well in the third quarter. So I, I think you got to kick this ball away and, and hope that your defense will continue to play at a high level. And that was unfortunate. You got a third down and one yard. You want to try to pound it in between tackles, but that Bowling Green defensive line stepped up and shut you down. So now you got to play defense. Bowling Green has yet to punt today. This is the third time for the freshman Joe Shopper. He's had two punts of over 40 yards, and this one with Ryan Bergring calling for the fair catch at the 16-yard line 
We have 11.47 to play. Fourth quarter in West Lafayette. Boilers and the Falcons tied at 21. Fourth quarter, big quarter for Daryl Hazel and Dino Babers. Game tied at 21. Purdue did not get points out of that drive, but at least they flipped the field. So now Stanley Bowling Green starts at their own 15. First off, there's no way Coach Babers got his first job at 50. He looks like he's 27. Johnson and his receiver was not looking, and that was Roger Lewis. And we have a penalty flag. Yeah, it was Robbie Rhodes, not Roger Lewis. Personal foul, hands to the face. Defense, number 11, 15-yard penalty, first down. That's on Antoine Miles. And that's what you don't want to do. You, you don't want to self-destruct. You got an opportunity. They didn't complete a ball on first down. You got second and 10, and you've got a penalty that gives them 15 yards in first down. So you want to settle down here defensively, lock in the way you did the last two possessions, and try to get this team off the field. Time of possession has been a huge win for Purdue, keeping Matt Johnson and Bowling Green off the field. Purdue through three quarters, 27 and a half minutes. Bowling Green at 20. Johnson hands it off, the spin, Travis Green still running, has the first down out to the 44-yard line. So the penalty and then the run by Green, 14 yards, and the Falcons out near midfield. Yeah, Travis Green, he is tough in space. Just a little delay sprint draw and hit that spin move that's been showing up all over college football this year. More in motion, handoff, Green. Wrestled down there. Miles helped make the tackle. And just great penetration by that front four allows those linebackers to run freely and make plays right there. It's good push up front by Purdue. Loss of one, second and 11. Miles, he's rushing. And that's out of bounds. Intended for Gary Dieter. All Johnson could do was throw it away. Great coverage by Robert Gregory. Outstanding coverage, not just by Robert, but by all the secondary across the board. And, and they did a good job, the defensive line that time, of not running past their rush lane so he could step up and run that time. Great total team effort there. Five defensive backs in. The nickel for Purdue. Three wide receivers to the top. Lewis, Tail Redding, and Ronnie Moore. Green in motion on third and 11. No rush. Johnson has time. Johnson now forced out of the pocket. Gets to the outside. Johnson has the first down at the 45. He fumbled the football and penalty flags come in. He had all the time of the world. It was a three-man rush by Purdue. And the question is, will the officials, is that a targeting call? Well, I'm not sure if it's targeting as much as hitting a quarterback when he's sliding, something that you can't do. Yeah. They very well could be targeted, an arm across the head. He went down for a slide. You got to lay off him once the quarterback goes down the slide. Personal foul. Defense, number two. 15-yard penalty at down to the end of the run. First down. DeWan Hunt. So, so again, it's not a targeting penalty, but whenever the quarterback goes to slide, you have to lay off him. I know it's close. It's tight down there. But when he goes down the slide, you got to jump over him, do your best not to hit him. They're going to call that 15 yards every time when you do that. Two big 15-yard penalties against the Bullymakers, and now Bowling Green has it at the Purdue 30, and Daryl Hazel not happy at all. Hey, it was just a tough defensive call. They went to sort of a prevent, had three safeties in the back, man underneath, and then your defensive line didn't rush because they didn't want to give up a run lane. When you have a good quarterback that can run around there and create space, he can make a play, and that's what happened. And give a lot of credit to the Bowling Green offensive line. One gave him time, no rush, but then enabled him to get free. Johnson in trouble, and that's incomplete. Pressured by Shane Henley and Jake Replogel. Defensive line did a good time that time recognizing the screen, so nobody rushed hard. They all stayed back, got their hands up. 
Nowhere to go with, with the ball for Matt Johnson, so he throws it in the dirt right there. Lives to fight another day. Henley wears number 47 out of Simi Valley, California. Purdue rotates eight defensive front players. Henley plays at a defensive end. And now the quick pitch again, and this time red again well. Ball loose, but he was down. That's Derek Lee. Again, we've seen that play a lot. That same formation, they run that full uh, option motion to the left, and then he flips it right back in to the tight end. It's a play that they've had a lot of success with here. But this is the money down right here for this Purdue defense. This is an opportunity, again, to get off the field. You have to expect that Bowling Green will go for it on fourth down, so you don't want to give up a lot here. Both teams have gone for it three times on fourth down today. This is a third down for Bowling Green. Johnson with time, now looks over the middle. It's complete. It's just too much time right there. Purdue is in straight man, but they only rush three guys. And that's just great protection. You'll see there's three rushers there. The offensive line forms that pocket. And Matt just hangs in there, steps up in the pocket, delivers a strike downfield for a big first down pickup. 22 yards to Ronnie Moore. He lost his helmet, so he'll have to sit out of play. And now first and goal for Bowling Green in the red zone. They go to Travis Green. Gets to the four-yard line. And that's the first time today in the red zone inside the 10 yard line that that Purdue defensive front put up some resistance when Bowling Green tries to run down there. I've been pretty impressed with their toughness inside the 10 yard line running the ball. Number 36 for Purdue Danny Easy Chuku. He had 12 tackles including a loss last week uh, for a loss last week in the loss to Virginia Tech. Now Johnson through the air. He looks it's incomplete. Too tall for Gary Dieter. He doesn't do it a lot, but he's done it a couple times today. The ball tends to float on him when he loses mechanics. You overstride right there, and that ball floats up. And uh, lucky for Purdue because that receiver was open there. Sean Lewis and Mike Lynch are the co-offensive coordinators for Bowling Green under second-year head coach Dino Babers. Matt Johnson came in leading. FBS in yards through the air as well as touchdown passes. He averages 49 attempts per game. He's thrown it 51 times today, and on his 52nd pass, it's complete. And it's complete to Ronnie Moore. Yeah, it's tough right there. A little bunch package out to the left of the defense, and when you're running man to man, the defenders have to know who to switch to. A little confusion there. You get a little hitch route, to sit down for a touchdown. And Ronnie Moore has the catch. His 13th receiving touchdown of his career, 15th overall. And again, the young man lost his father in May. And the kick is on Tyler Tate to again give Bowling Green a seven point lead. Well, Purdue's been in this situation three previous times, and each time they would come back and tie the game. Moore with a touchdown. First touchdown pass of the day for Johnson. 28-21, Bowling Green. It's brought to you by State Farm. It pays to double check. Talk to your agent today. On the campus of Purdue University in West Lafayette, Indiana. Touchdown for Ronnie Moore. He's gone 20 consecutive games with a reception. And he's honoring his dad this year. Eight receptions, 70 yards, and a touchdown for the young man that lost his father back in May. 28-21, Bowling Green has a seven-point lead. I mean, he did a really good job of recognizing coverage and finding a hole and sitting down, making a big target for the quarterback there in the red area. Tyler Tate's kick sails through the end zone. We head to Chicago now. Mike Hall with a T-Mobile studio update. What's up in East Lansing? All right, thanks so much. That's where Daryl Hazel and the Boilers will be. At Michigan State next Saturday to kick off their eight game Big Ten conference season. Boilermakers last year three and nine overall, just one and seven in the Big Ten. 
David Blouse had a very good game in his first career start. Redshirt freshman looks, and it's incomplete. And now a penalty flag comes in from the top. It was intended for Gregory Phillips. Isaiah Gordine had the coverage. Yeah, Isaiah was all over him right there. Had hands on him throughout the route. Good Holding. Defense number nine. Ten-yard penalty. Automatic first down. Stanley, it was the penalties against Purdue on that last drive. The two 15-yard penalties. The... The, the, the basically the personal fouls that hurt Indiana, or hurt Purdue. That, no question about it. And even here, you look, he's all over the wide receiver there. You just you can't do that. You got to get your hands off. But when you're a team trying to get over the hump like both these programs are sitting at one and two, it's the little things that count. And penalties loom big in a game, especially when they're 15 yards. Uh, we uh, heard the update, Michigan State. Indiana is playing at Wake Forest, trying to go for a 4-0 start in the non-conference season. Purdue is trying to go to 2-2. Two and two. And now on second down, injured Boilermaker, and that's the freshman, Markel Jones. And Jones is down. So he takes the hand up there. Looks like it might be a knee. Not really sure. Probably there in the pylon. Whenever the bodies are coming in, you see him grab the back of the leg. Sometimes your, your leg can get pinched a certain way or bent, and it looks like he's all right. It must have been a knee. Already seen Dominic Young go down again. He was the recipient of helmet to helmet from Eiler Hardy back in the first half. Yancey, one of their most veteran wide receivers, went out with an injury, but we've since seen him return. And now hopefully the good news for Markel Jones, who coming into the week is the number six freshman rusher across the country with 229 yards and three touchdowns through the first three games. He's been a pleasant surprise for this team, and he's been a workhorse today. Second down, Blau, wide open. Gregory Phillips off and running. 30, 25, 20. He'll go the distance. He's asking for what a play call right there by Coach Shoots. They've been running that ball in between the tackles. They go play action, the corner. Isaiah Gordine gets caught looking in the backfield and out the gate for a big touchdown to tie the game for Purdue. Gregory Phillips takes it 62 yards. And the Boilermakers have a chance to tie it with 7.58 to play. Again, the simple play action pass, and Isaiah Gordine gets look, caught looking in the backfield, and that's how you get it going in the fourth quarter to time this game for Purdue. Paul, Big play. Paul Griggs on for the extra point, and his kick is up. And his kick is good. So for the fourth time, Purdue has tied it here at Ross Aid Stadium. 28 apiece, BG and Purdue. Start, he's a red shirt freshman out of Texas. David Blau is our Duluth Trading Company hardest working player in his starting debut, 25 of 31 through the air, 291 yards, two touchdowns, no interceptions. He also scored on a rushing touchdown. And the Boilers have now tied it at 28. They're right where they want to be. All phases of the game are playing better, offense, defense, special teams. But here in the fourth quarter is an opportunity for this defense to step up and make a statement right now. This will be a short kick by Griggs, fielded it inside the 10. And the return will not get to the 20-yard line. But let's tee up Stanley again for this great play to Gregory Phillips. You watch these two guys. Look at their vision. Look what they're looking at. They're looking in the backfield. They both expect the other guy to take care. And what a great job by David here. That's a slight adjustment because there's no defense. Just throw a ball good enough for the receiver to catch and run. And it's a big play for the Purdue Boilermaker offense. Great eyes by Blau. And that's what the play action does. I mean, typically, you're having a great day running the ball before you get corners and safeties peeking in the backfield that much, but just a great play call and good execution. And now Johnson on first down. It's picked off. It's intercepted. Anthony Brown takes it into the end zone. Penalty flag out on the field. Brown with his second 
career interception, but a penalty flag may bring that back. Especially at the position it comes from, or could be on the return, but let's see what it is. And again, a misread it looked by, J by Matt Johnson. He is pointing the other way. And Daniel Capron will tell us what's up. Prior to the interception, pass interference, defense number 36, 15 yard penalty, automatic first down. Danny wow. Easy Chuku with a 15 yard penalty. That's what derailed the last drive defensively for Purdue. Yeah, that's a tough one right there. You get an opportunity to get not only a pick, but a score. You're going to see right over here on the right side of our screen, it's going to come in right there. And he's definitely holding, definitely holding wide receiver. He didn't allow him to get to that ball. Even without that holding, it looked like they weren't on the same page. That still might have been a pick. So that's a tough break right there for the Boilermaker defense. So Daryl Hazel and the Boilermakers have seen three critical 15-yard penalties hurt. The last drive, two 15-yard penalties. And it resulted in a touchdown for Bowling Green on a four-yard pass play from Matt Johnson to Ronnie Moore. The first touchdown through the air of the day for Johnson, who came in with an NCAA high 12. Five wide receivers. Johnson has the ball batted away. Jake Rapogel got his hand on it. That's a good job by the defensive line. Look, if you can't get there, then the next best thing is to get your hands up and to be active. This is what the coaching staff was talking about. So if you can't get to the quarterback, get your hands up, knock the ball down, deflect it. You might get a pick sometimes. Good play by the defensive end there. Second and 10 at the Bowling Green 34. Johnson, and that ball goes to the ground. Big pressure again. Raplogle batted one down, and then he forced that errant pass by Johnson. That's two back-to-back -back plays by him getting to the quarterback. And then you see it was a great job by the linebackers recognizing the screen. Nowhere for Matt to go at the football. Great team effort right there on defense. Greg Hudson is the third-year defensive coordinator for the Purdue Boilermakers and a big third down and ten. Ross 8 Stadium crowd making some noise. Johnson. And it's almost intercepted. Jawan Bentley. Pass was intended for Ronnie Moore. So a big three and out now for Bowling Green. Yeah, just a great play by number four, Jawan Bentley, middle linebacker. Breaks on the ball and almost has the play of the day if he could have got that one in his hands. That was a great defensive stance right there by the Boilermaker defense. Not, Outstanding. Not technically a three and out up because of the penalty, but still three straight plays there. Results in a fourth and ten. And now Joseph Davidson on for the first time today, the left-footed punter for Bowling Green. And Frankie Williams takes it inside the 15. Williams. Nowhere to go, and he'll be gang tackled back to the 15 yard line. They'll mark it at the 18, and we have a penalty flag on the field. A 49 yard punt by Davidson. And normally, is it where that flag is laying on the ground, normally that's holding by the return team. Let's see what they got. During the kick, personal foul, face mask, receiving team, number 32, half the distance to the goal, first down Purdue. So another big penalty against the Boilermakers, and this will, this drive will now start deep in their own territory, and that's Evan Pulliam. And that's a problem. I mean, when you have a program that's trying to get over the hump, the little things matter. And, you know, the last two defensive possessions, two 15-yard penalties, there was a 15-yard penalty on this one. And then on special teams, you get another penalty that puts your offense with their back against the wall. This is the area where Purdue is going to have to improve on if, if they're going to begin to be more competitive. I know Coach Hazel is, is not happy about this. It's going to occur right in the middle of the pack. 
you're going to see just a, a silly penalty right there. Pull the face mask. There's no need to do that. That guy wasn't going to get down there and make the play. Again, it's just it's not a headsy play, and it puts your team in a bad position. Purdue has already started one possession at the end of the third, start of the fourth at their own five yard line. They moved the football 44 yards and punted. But then Bowling Green scored on an 85 yard drive to take the 28 21 lead. Blau on first down. And looks out to Andrew as the catch. The veteran wide receiver out of West Lafayette. A gain of seven. As Anthrop has his fifth catch of the day. He grew up dreaming about playing in this stadium, just in the, in the shadow of it. And he's been a guy that's come up real big today. Went down and caught that ball, got his hands under it to put them in second and good field position. Blau has protection, forced out of the pocket. He can run the football and he will get out of bounds. Near the marker. Wow. They started to move the chains across the way. It's close. I just watch the effort on the sideline. Tippy Toeing make the dive. It looks like he was past that marker. It probably could have gave him another yard in that spot. But that that's the effort that Coach Hazel was looking for out of his quarterback, a guy that was going to take the plays when they were there. Not the field is that the runner was one half yard short of the line to gain not put the team in bad positions and, and he's done an outstanding job of doing that but also making plays if you just look at his completions on day 26 of 32 297 yards two touchdowns that's a great day for a veteran quarterback let alone a guy starting his first game Bill Simons is our replay official Bill Algy is our replay communications up here in the box I think they're going to catch his yeah. foot right back there so he's going to be well short well, his, the ruling on the field is confirmed. Third down. Yeah, his foot was there, but he still did a really good job of extending his body. And, and again, just great effort. And I think he's really acutely aware of where the chains are and what you have to do to get a first down. So he steps out of bounds there, but it's where the ball is that it should be placed. Just still great effort. So just past the 14-yard line, shy of the 15, inches to go on third down. For Purdue, tied at 28 with just over six minutes to play. And it looks like it should be enough. It is for the first down out to the 16. DJ Knox is in. We saw Markel Jones go to the bench earlier, and Knox, the sophomore, gets the first down. Yeah, it's still a little dicey. You know, teams that run the spread, play a lot of shotgun, is always tough when you have, you know, fourth and short or third and short, but they got enough to pick it up there and move the chains. Two wide receivers to the far side. Blau looks, and it's incomplete. Intended for Anthrop, sailed over his head and hit the ground in front of the defensive back for the Falcons. It's one of the first times he looked like a rookie there. He panned a little bit. Bowling Green brought a blitz off his left side, but Tailback did a great job of picking up that blitz. All he had to do is step into it, throw an accurate pass. That's the first time he looked a little young throughout the game today. Second and 10 now for the Boilermakers. Wow the backfield good catch by DJ Knox gain of five and another penalty flag and that's in the backfield personal foul roughing the passer defense number 61 the 15 yard penalty is added to the end of the run first down you see it just right there gets his hands up and pushes them for no reason you got to be smart Referees are protecting quarterbacks today. You just wonder what's going on here in the fourth quarter with these two teams. Who's trying to give this game away? Because both of them are making poor decisions out there that puts the team in a bad position. I think that's the fourth personal foul penalty of the quarter between the two teams. You're right. It's, it's crazy. And that's a big one against Bowling Green. Some breathing room. This drive started at the five. 
first down. Out of the backfield. Knox has another catch, 45. Knocked out of bounds at the 48-yard line. Another Purdue maker first down. A good play call. Something we haven't seen a lot out of Purdue today. Nice little spring, uh, spring screen right there. See those big linemen out in front of them? Get the ball into the hands of a playmaker with a lead block, and good things are going to happen for your offense. Gain of 12 on the pass play, an injured Bowling Green Falcon on the field. Five sixteen to play. As Daryl Hazel has a word with his young quarterback, David Blau, his first career start. He's a redshirt freshman, and here are the numbers. 27 of 34, 309 yards and two touchdowns and has virtually matched the afternoon of the veteran quarterback, Matt Johnson of Bowling Green. Well, not only has he matched it, he's been a little better because he hasn't turned the ball over. And then the big surprise is what he can do when he was running the football. Very effective, picking up first downs, scoring touchdowns. And when he's set in the pocket, he's confident. He throws accurate balls. He's got two touchdowns on the day. That was a big one early on. But just look how he reads it through. He's confident in the pocket. He steps up. It's been very productive for him. He's impressive in his first start. And I think Purdue has found their quarterback for the future. 5-16 to play. Purdue has the football first and 10 at their own 48-yard line. We welcome all of you that have been watching Michigan State and Central Michigan today at East Lansing as the Spartans, the number two team in the nation, get the win. With Stanley Jackson, I'm Kristen Airy. Purdue and Bowling Green are tied at 28. And here's the pass back to Blau. Blau has the catch. And he's in Bowling Green territory as Purdue went to Bilal Marshall, who came in. He's a former high school quarterback who has converted to wide receiver, and he makes that throwback pass to the quarterback. A little razzle-dazzle, the mad scientist, the offensive coordinator, shoot. He's done a good job of dialing it up today, and David Blau is a man that can do a lot of things for this football team. Run it, throw it, and catch it. It's a good play design right there for the Boilermakers. Again, a number of former quarterbacks have moved to other positions. For Daryl Hazel and his Boilermaker team. Trey Hart is in motion as Blau throws out of the backfield. Knox eludes the defender. 25 high steps and hurdles inside the 20 to the 17. <laughs> Coming into this game, Coach Hazel told us, look out for these two backs, Knox and Jones. They've run this play a few times. A nice little flip pass to the flat to get the ball in the hands of your playmakers. And when he gets it, boy, can he make plays. He's having an outstanding day, and he's helping his young quarterback by making big plays for him. 26 yards, he hurdled Denard Turner. First and 10, clock counting, inside four minutes to play. Inside the red zone, Knox to the 15-yard line. Again, they've run it well enough today again to keep this Bowling Green team off balance. Absolutely. They're keeping that team defense honest, running the ball, mixing in the pass. Right now they're milking the clock a little bit. Not sure it really matters with the Bowling Green offense because they can score really quick. But but this is a I really believe this is not just a game defining drive. This could be a season defining drive for Purdue right here, especially if they can get seven and take the lead and put the pressure back on Bowling Green. Well, you knew there'd be a lot of plays today. 75 run by Purdue, 82 by Bowling Green. And remember, a couple of weeks ago at Maryland, Bowling Green ran 105 plays for 692 yards and almost 40 minutes of time of possession. It looks like DJ Knox is a little banged up after that last play and I uh, had to help him off the field right there. So let's hope that he can be okay because you mentioned earlier a lot of guys getting banged up for that Purdue offense. Now it does look like Markel Jones is back so that's good because he had left. We'll, we'll take a look he had a spin move it looked like he took a helmet to the back as he cuts there to his left and boom right there to the lower back. That's an area that's not well protected by the pads and let's hope he'll be okay. So two freshmen back there Blau and Markel Jones Blau looks 
pumps, and it's incomplete. Too high for Danny Anthra. Third down. He's a little indecisive right there. I thought he felt like he saw Danny early, but you saw him pump the ball out. Let that ball go on the first one. You'll throw a more accurate ball. You'll, you'll see that with a lot of young quarterbacks. Whenever they pump because they're indecisive, that next throw is a little inaccurate. Stanley, 10th play of this drive. They've got a kicker who's struggling right now. Is this two down territory even with the game tied at 28? I think so. If you don't trust your kicker, you don't send them out there. So, so you call a play that doesn't necessarily have to pick up the first down, but get you a lot closer. He missed a 20 yarder back in the first half. Wow, has time. Looks to the corner of the end zone, and it runs out of room. It's out of bounds. Intended for D'Angelo Yancey. Yeah, based on that call, it, here comes the kicking team. I mean, if they were going to go for it on fourth down, I think you'd have saw maybe a slant route, you know, a shorter route just to put yourself in close proximity of the chains. But once they went for it all, I think we knew they were going to go for it. And look, no matter who you are, what position you play, there's opportunities for redemption. Let's see if Paul can get it done. Ball at the 15, spotted at the 22, a 32-yard field goal for Paul Griggs, who is three of seven on the year. He missed a 20-yarder from the hash mark, the right side in the first half. Snap, placement is down, the kick is up. And the kick is no good. Griggs misses again. Yeah, that, that's disappointing. Again, we, we talked off the air. Griggs was a solid kicker for them a year ago. Didn't miss a lot of kicks, but this year just he has the yips. I mean, he hits it really well. It looks like it's going through. He's not missing it by a ton. But yeah, it's not horseshoes or hand grenades. You got to get that ball through the uprights. That's a tough miss for the Boilermakers. Welcome to the audience that just watched Rutgers beat Kansas in Piscataway this afternoon with Stanley Jackson. I'm Chris Denary. We're tied 28 apiece, 250 to play here at Ross Aid Stadium in West Lafayette. The Boilermakers try to get the win. They have not led, and they've missed two short field goals, one in the first half, one here in the second half that would have given them the lead. The last time Paul Griggs missed a field goal, Matt Johnson took Bowling Green the length of the field for a touchdown that gave the Falcons the lead at halftime. Out of the pocket, he has to throw it away. Yeah, to, this Purdue secondary has been really good here in the second half, really slowing down this Bowling Green attack. So I don't anticipate them to give it up the way they did in the first half. But, but again, two golden opportunities for Purdue to take the lead. 11 play drive, you get down inside the 10 yard line, you're expecting to come away with points. But again, this is a this is a moment that can define their season if they can figure out how to win this game. Now Johnson runs, has some running room and has the first down. He's done that effectively at times today. The redshirt senior out of Harrisburg, Pennsylvania. Johnson coming in, leading the nation in passing yards and touchdowns. He's thrown for 386 yards today with a touchdown and an interception. He also had a fumble on a high snap back in the first half. Green, nowhere to go. Yeah, they've run that play a few times today. That's a delayed draw play where the quarterback gets it, looks, and then hands it off. They did have success early in the game, but that time that Purdue defensive front sniffed it out and shut it down. Purdue, through the first three weeks, it allowed 187 yards on the ground. Bowling Green has rushed for just 115 today. Johnson on second and 10 out of the backfield, the green penalty flag. And where that flag is thrown, that's typically a holding call, so we'll, we'll see what comes with that. But but that's been a play that Purdue, or Bowling Green's had a lot of success. Whenever Purdue drops back into that cover three zone, the flat area is open. Personal foul, hands to the face, defense number 54, 15 yard penalty, first down. And that's on Jake Replogle, and we have seen numerous personal foul penalties here in the second half on both teams. The last time Bowling Green scored, they had two Purdue penalties that aided them. And you see the right defensive end against number 71 just gets his hands up way too high. And, and again, in last possession, he made two really good plays. In this possession, he's the one giving them the penalty. And Ronnie Moore oh knocked down. 
inside the final 90 seconds and now Bowling Green at the Purdue 35 yard line. They scored just before the end of the first half to take a 21-14 halftime lead. Now trying to win the game tied at 28. Johnson out of the pocket and taken down from behind. Shane Henley makes the stop. That's a big play by Shane Henley and Purdue defense. They really need it. They're kind of on their heels right now, giving up that 15-yard penalty. That's a big play right there. You see that spin move, and then he just gets to the quarterback and gets him on the ground. Ryan Watson was also in on the chase. The nose guard out of Ellicott City, Maryland. Third down. 43 seconds and counting to play. Johnson rolls out of the pocket. Penalty flag. Johnson escapes, has the first down, but that, now I would say that's in the range of holding, but we've also seen the, the, the hands to the face by the defense on a number of occasions. Yeah, definitely think that one was holding. We'll take a look at it. Personal foul, foul. face mask, defense number 11. Half the distance to the goal, first down. Antoine Miles with another penalty. You see Miles right there in the middle. There's hands right there, number 11. You saw it late, got those hands up, and it's tough. I mean, it, you got to keep your hands down out of their face. So on two drives here in the fourth quarter, Purdue twice has two 15-yard personal foul penalties, and now with 20 seconds to play, Bowling Green the football inside the red zone. And the running back is Green and he's into the end zone and the Falcons have the lead with nine seconds to play. That's just a tough break right there. They've been really good running the ball when they were inside the 10 yard line all day. But when you're giving up chunks of yards on penalties, it creates this opportunity. You see a great job by that offensive line just clearing it out. Then the running back does the rest, break two tackles, get in the end zone. Travis Green scored the first touchdown of the day on an 11-yard run back in the first quarter. And now the Falcons, with nine seconds to play, try to tack on a 35th point, a 12-yard touchdown run by Green. And the kick is good. So heartbreak in West Lafayette. The Boilermakers, nine seconds. And they trail by seven on BTN. Green has his 29th career touchdown, 35-28. Bowling Green has a seven-point lead. Let's take a look at the Dr. Pepper play of the game, a 12-yard run by Travis Green as Bowling Green Stanley milked the clock. Nine seconds left. That's a one-of-a-kind Dr. Pepper play of the game. It's yeah, just a great effort right there by the offensive line, creating a lane. And then, you know, sometimes your running backs have to do the rest of the work. And Travis Green was excellent there, breaking a couple tackles, getting the end zone. And you made the point. The best thing about that drive was how they managed the clock, not giving Purdue a lot of time to get something done here. 70 yards rushing, and that kick is in the end zone. So 25-yard line is where Purdue will have it. No time off the clock. Nine seconds to play. David Blau has been sensational today. The redshirt freshman making his first start, 335 yards through the air, has found a way to get Purdue in the end zone four times. And each of the first four times he was able to tie the score. Unfortunately, Stanley, now he has nine seconds. That's all he has. And not only that, he's put the team in position to get another six points with field goals. I don't think you guys him to play a better game. He's got a 169.6 rating on the day. He didn't turn the football over. He did everything you asked him to do. But at the end of the day, penalties is a big part of this loss for Purdue. Purdue coaches told us yesterday they felt they were very close. They have been very close today. Nine seconds to make something happen, and he'll be picked off. So his perfect day really will end. Try to make something out of nothing. And Dino Babers will get the win here in West Lafayette. He was an assistant some 24 years ago under Jim Coletto. And the Bowling Green Falcons will start two and two. And just a, a, a simple 12-yard hitch route, but there's 
indecision by the wide receiver not coming back to the ball it leads to uh, his first interception on the day. And a Gatorade bath for Dino Babers. His daughter Tasha, his second daughter, was born the day of the 1992 bucket game. And uh, she was born that morning. He was able to join the sideline, one of his four daughters. And now victory formation for Matt Johnson and the Bowling Green Falcons. And they have two wins against the Big Ten this year. Dino Babers and Bowling Green win at 35-28. And the Purdue Boulder are so close again. They are really close. They're going to watch the film and kick themselves about a couple of things, especially the five major penalties in the second half and in the fourth quarter. That's what cost them the game. On top of that, they got to figure out how to make field goals. So Bowling Green two and two on the year. Purdue one and three. The Boilermakers open the Big Ten next week at Michigan State. Bowling Green opens the Mid-American Conference at Buffalo. Once again, our final score today in West Lafayette. Bowling Green is three and zero all time against Purdue. They beat Purdue 35-28. Coming up on BTN Big Ten Game Break with Dave, Jerry, and Howard. For Stanley Jackson, our entire crew. I'm Kristen Airy saying so long. This has been a presentation of the Big Ten Network.